Okay. Note to self, don't gobble down the food so quickly. I think I just gave myself indigestion. My controller died for my Welcome time. back. <laughs> Hello there. I saw what you did to the spawn area. I think everyone will see what I did to the spawn area. Oh, Have you seen this model, Batman? Oh, you're very loud. I wish there was a way to turn people down. That'd be awesome. Hold up. Let me do that on my side. Here. Is that better? A little, yes. I think it might just be your changer. It seems to pierce my eardrums with a spike of death. <laughs> what did you do to the library? <laughs> I did exactly what needed to be done. <laughs> I already, I can already figure out by that comment, and I'm walking what? away. Run dwarf. <laughs> okay, you are broadcasting breathing. That guy. What? Excellent taste and color. A delicious chocolate girl. Yeah. Good stuff. Why? <laughs> you expect any less from one such as I? No, I expected exactly that at some point. I got another one. Oh. This one that came out. I can't play this. Whoa, whoa. Ooh. It's the box. Hold up, I gotta see what your package is. Nice. This, this model, the skirt is oh, useless. Look at, look at this. That is the best kind of skirt, oh, is not it? Stop moving. Yeah. It hides everything that needs to be hidden. Nothing at all. Okay. She doesn't do at all. Very classy look, Peg. Thank you. <laughs> this smile is never gonna get old. <laughs> I love it. It's so great. So now when you now when you say yeah. he's talking, you just hit that one. What was that sorry? <laughs> so you're nope. saying the who's that. talking thing and you just smile. <laughs> who's using his chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> I love these faces. Oh, that's not bad for normal. <laughs> Just run up behind someone and then make that face and like pop your head around theirs. <laughs> so subtle. Oh crap, I forgot. I don't think the stream can actually see that. <laughs> I think I've made it for <laughs> VR only. <laughs> Damn. All right. Let's load the world up, and whilst it's downloading, I'll see Yay. about re-uploading this model. In better settings. Worlds! Because I think I need to download the world myself. I forgot to do tests. So I'm glad it at least works for some people. Yep, I oh my god, I'm so tall. Give me a moment, friends. Oof.
I did, yeah. I did so much damage against the hand. I just want to live it my way. <laughs> I don't know why I've got that song stuck in my head now. <laughs> it's my life. Oh, bow, bow, bow. <laughs> I apologize, lovely people, for being such a crass and crude individual. I feel so tall. Ah, <laughs> I forgot to recalibrate. No, but it covers the doorways, and that's what works. Oh, look, he's here. Look at that. <laughs> hmm? You won't be able to stop me anymore. Yeah, hey. I beg to differ. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the greatest <laughs> library ever. So, Meg? No, it's not. What's next? The sky? Oh, yes, and the floor. And these avatars. And then the menu board. Or rather, the house rules. <laughs> Let's go, lovely people. I'm sitting, am I? Just very slow at walking. Ah, oh, I see. It's because I'm so large. I'm not used to being this tall. And there he is. My favorite demon. Venom. <laughs> He's so small. <laughs> I should have really increase the that size of them. That means that the slime's even smaller. Oh yes, well, that, that's the whole funny small. thing. Hmm? I refuse to believe what I saw in there. <laughs> oh God! You are not allowed to refuse, homebrew. Oh, well, I mean, you that fixes paint. it. It's no longer piercing through the void, but now it's got a nasty white background Yay. on it. That's Ooh. awesome. Yep. Even that's my you, you will pay for that. <laughs> I can't see it anymore. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nux. <laughs> Do you just see a white screen now? Yeah, I do. Okay, so it seems that yeah, I need transparency on for some people. Whoa, whoa. Easy quest already on the, the ground. The screen just won't load for me. Okay. <laughs> it did load when it first started a while ago, but now it won't. Kind of want to just do the reading yeah. with this face. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Just sit, do it. just sit down and glitch it with that face going. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Milky. Oh, no. Oh, you're floating now. Oh, you ripped something. Oh, he has his clothes on. Oh, we're good. Damn. Damn. Okay. Now the little right. viewpoint is missing. Oh, well. <laughs> Can't win all of them. I really haven't tested this model. But now I've got this awesome vase on. <laughs> <right when> <laughs> What? <laughs> I need to stretch the hip bone out, that's what that means. 
No, it's not. It's not your chair. Nani? I think I'm just going to give a standing performance today. I'll stand inside the chair. <clears throat> Too bad I can't lock it and turn off the click points because I'm going to be clicking them all night. Yeah! <clears throat> Wait, we ended. <laughs> it doesn't override all my textures anymore. I think Andy's and Bricks are doing something at the minute. Yeah, because Bricks is online. We haven't heard uh, his description yet, Tech Priest. He probably is, master, but I just put him an armored dude again. there, so... Made him a little green. <laughs> Why didn't I hear an alert for that? Did anyone else hear an alert for that sub-gift? Nope. Nope. Hmm. Thank you, Streamlabs, for once more being a butt. Let me just check it. Well, it should be all set up and arrived. I have the key. Why is the ticket not here? Down here? Why is... Hold on, let's flip over for a second. Why is none of this stuff working? Refresh the case on the current page. Well, I will be back. I am going to get batteries, because I want VR, not desktop. <laughs> Refresh the case of the current page. Viewer chat's not working either. What? But why the hell is viewer chat all buggy like that? Perfect. Really? <sighs> I need to fix the anchor point of this camera too, it seems. Why is oh, viewer squishy. chat not working either? God damn. It's VR game. Totally makes sense. The way the weights are at the Let's do a test. Perfect. Your Perfect. pledge will make the difference. Well, Thank that's you. a test. Thank you, John, for actually not... <laughs> <laughs> so it seems that the alerts are working now. But viewer chat still... Oh, there's viewer chat. Aha! Thank you, Rigo. All righty, lovely people. Normality has been restored. What is wrong with your eyes? Hmm? I feel so different being so tall. I feel... Eh? <laughs> I got tall, but I can't do it on this world. It's too small. Hello, too small. Hello there, Murmur. How are you doing? I'm Welcome to the reading hall. Oh, I get it. Hmm. What do you mean you get it? They're completely grey. Oh, they're a shadow avatar. Alright. Uh, Let us begin the reading, my dear allies, in a course towards the glorious reclamation of all that is known in mankind. Our dominance will reign supreme oh, wow. when we move to the arms of hell. What the hell? You're bloody tall. I we am tall. Are the gods now. <laughs> Good news. I've danced already, so I can just sit now. You haven't danced enough. All right. Oh. Really? Oh, okay. Time to go then. <sighs> Let us read. The armies are forming. The invasion is soon to come. 
Rimuru went through describing the formations of the various military corps that were part of Tempest City, promoting and allocating troops to each of their corps, corps where they can make the best use of their abilities. Meanwhile, on the Empire's side, the right-hand man of the Emperor does not trust Welcome the new upstart the Yuki, hall. for good reason, as we find out that Yuki has filled the Empire's ranks with sleeper agents of a kind. The transported or summoned heroes from another world, sorry, from another world, all have a command embedded within them to rebel and spread chaos when the war is in full swing. Diablo, who had been strolling and slaughtering its way through the depths of hell, decided to retrieve old acquaintances, bringing these devils back to the material plane to pledge their undying subservience to Rimuru. We got a look into the mind of Venom, one of the lesser, more interesting devils that was brought to the material realm. He understood that veneration and... Oh, sorry, I've... Mis miswritten this, he understood the veneration that Diablo applied to the seemingly harmless slime. The slime Rimuru was, in fact, a god. Pledging himself, as the others did too, these new devils and their subordinates fill out the remaining magical golems that were being grown. We ended the last reading with a small scouting group that has been tasked with capturing the labyrinth. Bum, bum, bum. To be continued. See you all next reading. <laughs> oh, no. We are the gods now. <laughs> oh no. What is this? Who keeps doing things? I hope you don't mind me just yeah. sitting in the air doing... Mm. I'll move in a second. Arethi has resubscribed. For three months. Three months and going strong. Keep being amazing, Daddy. I will continue to be amazing. Oh, Lord. Yay. Oh, Kim, why are you throwing out so many gifts? <laughs> you crazy man. <laughs> You're too kind. All right. E-reader is ready. If I'm going to sit, I may as well sit in the right chair. The right chair in the wrong place makes all the hip thrusting difference. Okay, let's get this on the road then. Chapter 145 Underground Labyrinth Capture Capture of Irresistible Force The report both surprised and shocked us. It was about the appearance of people who finally captured the dungeon's 50th floor. Certainly, this year, the adventurers had improved their skills considerably. Groups that were able to capture the 30th floor had gradually begun to appear. The devised floor-capturing strategies used the phenomenon known as barely escaping death, zombie attack plan, coming back from the dead strategy, or abandoning the scapegoat plan for the glorious strategy, and so forth. There were people that used a frontal attack as well. Accompanied by the proficiency of their skill and the improvement of their equipment, they also had their abilities improve. But after the 30th floor, not only was there a trap that killed everyone at the beginning, the monsters also came groups and fought together. It becomes difficult to handle that when using the unorthodox capturing methods. So, the most recent leading capture group was mimicking the capture method that Masayuki and his party used against the Guardian of the 40th floor. But the guardian of the 40th floor was Tempest Serpent. It was the black snake I had met way back in the beginning. It had breath attacks that were effective against groups, and many people had watery eyes after their equipment was destroyed by it. Then, because I was nice, I kindly rent them equipment with the Tempest Crest. They would need to compensate us if they broke it. Well, the earnings they got till now were completely deprived. We thought that it was a reliable guardian that would bring us a wonderful fortune. If a person that could be defeated, sorry, if a person that could defeat it appeared, then, well, besides, the guardian of the 50th floor was Gozul. He was violence incarnate. When his restraint was removed, <laughs> after all, Gozul wasn't weak. Either way, maybe thanks to the restraints placed on him while on the 30th floor, he was able to come up with creative ways of battling for this floor. The old foolish Gozur that only depended on his own strength had disappeared. It was the same with Mezur. 
Racking his brains together with Gozu, the two devised their fighting style by discussing it with each other. Before we were aware of it, the arrangements and arguments they would hold whenever they met were now forgotten, and the two had become close friends. The two alternated guarding the fiftieth floor. I remembered that I set the equipment drop to one hundred percent for the first time win, only, as a reward in case someone was able to defeat them. It was a unique class equipment, the Mino series. It was equipment that boasted very nonsensical power, named after the ruler of the labyrinth, the Minotaur. The weapon was either a, Min a Minos Bardike, a cow-headed devil's battle-axe, or a Minos Trident, a horse-headed devil's war-spear. Ah, there was no shield. After that was the pieces for a completed set of armor. It was the jewel which Kurobi's best disciples had used and to the best of their ability. Which I have created. Well, because I believed that there wouldn't be many people capable of reaching this place so easily, I had only prepared ten sets, and no more. In the first place, Kozul and Mezul had become stronger after I gave them names, so if a person capable of defeating them appeared, I might scout them. Because of this, I had arranged that an emergency message would be sent if they were ever defeated. Either way, if a lot of adventurers attacked them in waves, the two would accumulate fatigue and be defeated. But no matter the methods the adventurers used to defeat them, I wanted to know about the people that managed to defeat such powerful entities as Gozul and Mezul. In case they didn't want to be scouted, there was a possibility that the other party was hostile. This time as well. Were they attacking in waves because of Masayuki's charisma? When I thought so, my expectations were overturned. In the report, it was said that Gozul was defeated by just three people. Furthermore, they weren't people that had been active recently. They seemed to be newcomers that had arrived recently. It was necessary to promptly collect information on the newcomers. That was why I cancelled the long-awaited test run of the improved surveillance magic and went to the command room that had been prepared inside the labyrinth. When I entered the room, Ramirez and Veldora were there. Dino and Vesta seemed to have taken a day off today. Disregarding Dino, Vesta had accumulated fatigue since he had come to this place recently, so it was just perfect for him. Ramirez and Veldora were full of energy. These two people were probably strangers to the concept of tiredness. It was the so-called children's stamina. If children are doing things that were interested in, sorry, that they were interested in, then they wouldn't get tired at all. Hmm. Uh. Oh, you came, Commander. There's no change in the situation today. <laughs> I didn't understand what it was that hadn't changed. Perhaps she might have said it because it suited the mood. I looked at the picture projected onto the big screen. Projected onto the screen were three youngsters. It seemed they traversed the floor with a like an unstoppable force. The way they fought was really unique as well. With a clearly abnormal throwing power, there was a person that grabbed the air and threw it. He had a large, sturdy build and brown hair. With his fine, chiseled features, he had a considerably good appearance. He wasn't wearing heavy equipment like iron armor. Instead, he was wearing chainmail made from weaved steel fibers, and a coat over it. Hmm. They all looked pretty much the same. The skinny one had concealed his entire body with a pitch-black robe. Another one seemed to be wearing a white robe over chainmail. He looked Asian, and the white robe was the kind often seen in hospitals. In every aspect, he was Japanese-like. Without a doubt, he seemed to be an otherworlder. A group of six death wolves, or ghost wolves, came running. With a speed that typical adventurers couldn't perceive, the wolves closed the distance in a dash. It seemed to have judged the situation instantly from a distance. It would only receive attacks one-sidedly. As expected of the monsters above the fiftieth floor, even a monster that looked like a small fry had considerable intelligence. By the way, one death wolf is considered B-plus rank, so it spelled trouble for the six if the six of them gathered. It was also a ghost-type monster, with the trait of nullifying damage if they weren't attacked with a wholly attributed weapon or a magic weapon. Even if its body vanished, it will regenerate immediately. So, even just one wolf was dangerous if you didn't possess the countermeasures for it. <laughs> you would be devoured instantly if you were careless. <sniffs> Don't underestimate me, you dogs! Hoorah! The one with brown hair, who had been grabbing and throwing the air until now, took out an ominous battle-axe and swung it powerfully. With one sweep, three death wolves turned into light particles and disappeared. Ah, that ominous battle-axe. I soon remembered that it was the Minos Pardike. 
Uh, it was a unique class equipment, and naturally, it belonged to the magic weapon category. Even if someone couldn't pass magic, it was still possible to damage a monster with the magic power possessed by the weapon. Furthermore, this was related to the raw materials used to make the Mino series. Silver that had been mixed with demon steel and turned into mithril. It was a specialized weapon that could easily inflict a great deal of damage to undead-type monsters and ghost-type monsters. Ah, oh, if it's the Minos Bardike, then Death Wolves will be defeated in one blow. Yeah, that weapon is the thing that Gozul dropped. The combat sense and weapon adaptability of the person that picked it up seems great. Oh, that was meant to be Veldora. Oh, well. Veldora agreed with my grumble. After that, I heard the story of their battles until now, while observing their combat style. As for the snack, nowadays I preferred potatoes. Based on the story I heard about them, their battles until now were mostly... What? Well, mostly of that brown-haired guy defeating the enemy. I saw it myself and understood it. The brown-haired guy was certainly strong. But what happened to the various traps in the labyrinth? Regarding those, the black-robed guy smoothly discovered them and seemed to have told his friends their position. As for the incomprehensible traps or tricky traps, those were a crucial part from the fiftieth floor and below. As if he could see it, the black-robed guy precisely indicated the trap's locations. I was certain that it was some kind of ability. You could say that he was an indispensable person for capturing a labyrinth. The last one was the white-robed guy. His turn had only come up once until now, and that was during the fight against Gozul. I had seen the footage through the Thought Link, but I was certain that this fellow was also someone with a unique class ability. He had taken out syringes from his pocket and given them to his two companions. Immediately after that, Gozul's movement had rapidly become dull. He might have received some kind of abnormal status, but as Gorzuro's movements became dull, he became an easy mark for the brown-haired guy. The one who landed the finishing blow was the white-robed guy. He had taken out a scalpel that shone silver from his pocket, and in an instant he had cut the blood vessels on Gorzuro's nape. I noticed that he was from the intelligence faction, which assesses the situation and takes the time to wait for a change in the situation, unlike a musclehead that didn't think about anything. Their party was very balanced. Notification. The result of the analysis is in. The attack that individual Gozur received was something similar to a neurotoxin. The room was filled with poisonous gas. The poison obstructed the movement of those who lacked immunity to it. There is no remaining effect until now. Ah, poisonous gas. And in addition, he seems to be able to come up with strategies that worked against the enemy on the spot. Hmm. I considered the results of the analysis which Raphael had made based off of the data, which remained in the air. Hmm. I guess based off of this white robe, but there's probably no doubting that he was a medical-related unique skill. At that time, I heard a knocking sound from the door. Then the door opened, and Shuna entered the room. She came in holding an, in what, an entry paper, which had, the <sighs> which had the registered information of the three from the Adventurers Guild, which had become a branch of the committee. This is the registered information of the three that succeeded in capturing the 50th floor? Shuna handed over the paper after bowing. I received it with a nod and confirmed its contents. She... Oh, words, these names. Shinev, 23 years old. Wizard. Mark, 26 years old. Warrior. Zin, 17 years old. Hunter. Don't ask why I put that accent on. So only the minimum information had been filled out. Their place of origin was a small country near the Empire. The reason for coming here, that was written on the paper, was that they had heard rumors about the dungeon from a merchant. Well, well, that was a lie, no matter how you looked at it. If I recall correctly, magicians needed to make a contract with spirits to use magic. Sorcerers handled chants based on their knowledge of elements. Wizard was a high-ranked job that needed expertise of both jobs. It was a lofty and difficult occupation that not everyone could attain. Warriors were similar in that they needed both the expertise from the fighter job and the swordsman job, because a warrior was a close combat expert capable of using every type of weapon. Obviously, it wasn't an easy occupation to obtain. We arrived at the last one, a hunter. This occupation could be called the peak for those who hunt monsters. It was an occupation that relied mostly upon and belonged to the Subjugation Guild. In this world, there were a few people with excellent skills in detecting traps of monsters. What? Sorry, it's hard to read when it gets to the bottom. Detecting traps or monsters with a thief job. That was because currently, thief really meant thief in the truest sense. 
Meanwhile, calling oneself a hunter was possible, since there was no native hunting tribe here. Certainly they were a good, balanced party, but if it was true that they had come from the Empire, without a doubt they were spies. However, were they foolishly honest enough to have written the truth? They might have done that, but I thought that there were other choices, like they could have decided to say that they came here from the Demon Lord's territory under Milim's rule, or from another continent under Leon's rule. <laughs> oh well, the truth didn't matter. There was one person which I surely needed to pay attention to, the black-haired, white-robed young man, Shiniv. Instead of magic, he was using a mysterious ability. Or rather, <laughs> they've changed his name. It went from Shiniv to Shinji. Or rather, Shinji, no matter how you looked at it, it was Shinji. The brown-haired guy was Mark. He had not only thrown air bullets at monsters and monster corpses, but falling rocks as well. Anyway, it seemed he could throw anything as long as he could grab it. He grabbed a living monster and threw it, inflicting damage to both enemies, and defeated them together, which almost made me spew out the tea. But it seemed his being a warrior was not a lie since he handled the Mino Spardag skillfully. The black robe guy was Zen. This guy seemed to have eyes capable of seeing through traps perfectly. In the beginning I had thought that his intuition was sharp, but it seemed to be sense danger, sense monster, and sense trap. Welcome to with the all of those power. he managed to evade everything beforehand. He looked at the places with traps and conferred their location to his friends, and I was certain that it wasn't a coincidence. Originally on the 50th floor and beyond, there were increasingly brutal traps that became the main threat instead of the monster's strength. Without looking strange, the room could have been filled with ghost-type monsters, had its air pressure changed, been without oxygen, or had poisonous water. Like that, I had set traps of dangerous levels to prevent the capture of the dungeon, but everything was seen through by him, so they were all useless. Moreover, his sense of direction was also excellent. He wasn't deceived by the floor's rotation and the like, and easily advanced using the shortest route. Obviously, a maze wasn't effective. If there was an injury, the white-robed youth, Shinji, would easily treat it. Although they were just three people, there were people specialized in capturing labyrinths. However, the three of us joyfully watched their method of capturing the dungeon. No, there was no way that we would use them as a reference for when we were going to capture the dungeon, or anything like that. Don't you think like that? Don't you dare! Hey, you over there, I was only honestly praising the strong person's way of fighting. Honestly. Shuna poured the three of us another cup of tea whilst astounded. The tea today was black tea with the pleasant fragrance of apple. Starting from the fiftieth floor was the real thing, but the degree of difficulty didn't change, even if there was someone that didn't act blah. Even if there wasn't someone that hadn't activated the trap until the fiftieth floor. If that was so, I thought that to truly test their ability, I would use the result of whether they could defeat the 70th floor's guardian or not. The guardian of the 60th floor was the ghost king, Adelman. It was a high-ranking undead king that looked like a polished skeleton. It was a high-ranking priest who had gone to purify the dead spirits that had gushed forth from the remains of a battlefield in the Jura's Great Forest. But he had become the shadow of his former self after becoming an undead. Because of an undead's abnormal status, that is, Undeadification. What a stupid status. <laughs> but as a result, Priest Adalman had become an undead with enormous magic power. Though it was a case of the tail wagging the dog, it had become the king of ghosts with that magic power and seemed to spend its time quietly in a cave. When I assumed the position of Demon Nord, I specifically and specially went to greet him. At that time, it was almost purified. It wasn't a funny story. That him was I guarding the sixtieth floor. Well, I heard I thank you at the same time. I was guarding the sixtieth floor. Unfortunately, I believed that those three were at a disadvantage. Ghost King Adelman had a fighting power beyond A rank, EP forty four thousand. Naturally, he had a higher rank than Gozul and Mesur. His strength was not on par with the devil's, but it couldn't be helped since it was weak point since its weak point was too obvious. He was awfully weak to the holy attribute and the light attribute. He was an extremely troublesome being if you fought it seriously, since it could summon ghost knights and ghost wolves endlessly. If he were to attack a town, he would be acknowledged as a disaster, although it could be said that they also shared the same attribute weaknesses. Therefore, for this floor, since they would have gotten used to the traps, I had set an easy-to-clear boss. The people who were able to defeat Gozur and Mesur using only brute force may defeat it easily if they only paid attention to the attribute's weakness. Moreover, 
It was a mistake. With Minos's Bardike, they could defeat an enemy with one blow. That thing was made from the wholly attributed Mithril. It delivered double the damage to the undead types and ghost type enemies. Because of the limited first time only service, or something like that, they got a bit too cocky, right? So, I did something bad to Ghost King Adelman. Unfortunately, he wouldn't be capable of stopping those three. Well, it might have been my fault, but I hoped he could forgive me. So as I thought that, I was looking forward to the Guardian on the 70th floor. <laughs> okay, let's get on to the next chapter. Chapter 146, Underground Labyrinth Capture. Outcome and Conclusion. Perceiving that invaders had entered his domain, the ghost King Adelman curled his meatless lips. Then he made a noise by grinding his teeth slightly. It was hard to understand it, but it could be said that the Ghost King Adelman was grinning broadly and sneering. Yeah, seems to be a pretty good move. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. You seem to be in a pretty good mood, Adelman Summer. The man, who was a holy knight and his trusted confidant, greeted Adelman. He was a ghost and didn't have a physical body. However, he stood with a figure unaltered from when he was alive. Though he had been transformed into a ghost, which was considered a monster, he hadn't possessed any humans or monsters, but had constructed his body, which was the same as when he was alive, from a multitude of corpses. As for Adolman, he didn't have any attachment to his body when he was alive, though he was rather pleased with his current figure, which had become mere bones. While Adolman's trusted confidant, who was the former Holy Knight commander, may have had some attachment and pride towards his appearance during his lifetime. It was because his appearance had the refreshing, though it was strange to say that as a ghost was refreshing, facial speech features of a young man. But from the blue will-o'-wisp that flew around him and his pale skin, it was clear that he wasn't alive. <sighs> I'm in a good mood. Guests seem to have come all back. He informed his confidant, the former Holy Knight Commander Albert, of the presence of invaders. He responded, I see. Did they finally come? Understanding everything, Albert, who was now a death paladin or a ghost Holy Knight, nodded joyfully. In the past, they had gone to conduct a purification with goodwill to prevent the outbreak of a large-scale dead spirit disaster in the battlefield of the Great Jura Forest. In doing so, the priest Adelman and four holy knights had gone together, but they had encountered an unexpected situation. When they had arrived at the battlefield's remains, a dragon zombie, or a carrion dragon, an atrocious monster, was living there. Although they had succeeded in defeating the dragon zombie after a desperate fight, they had used up all of their strength there. There was no one to come rescue them, since they hadn't acted on the orders of the church, but based on their own convictions. Thus their fate was sealed, but their hearts, which wished for the peace of the great Jura Forest, caused a miracle. Well, rather than a miracle, it might have been a disaster for them, though. <laughs> Adalman's group transformed into ghosts after receiving the curse of the dead, and a large amount of magic essence. However, their strong willpower, Priest Adalman and the Holy Knight Commander Albert, succeeded in keeping their egos. Priest Adalman became an undead king, the King of Ghosts. The Holy Knight Commander Albert became a Death Paladin, and his three subordinates became Death Lords, or Ghost Leaders. The Ghost King Adelman, who had acquired the abilities of a Necromancer, or a Death Ruler, was dominating the dead spirits in the surroundings, and stayed inside a cave. That was an old story from more than several hundred years ago. The rules of the time didn't apply to them, so, I say the rules of time, who had become dead, so the numbers of the years that had passed couldn't be confirmed, but he noticed the birth of a new ruler of the great Jura Forest. It was natural. After the disappearance of the storm dragon Veldora, he had sent his subordinates to gather information, since he had expected the forest to become turbulent. The result, he chose to subject the new demon lord. What? The result, he cho chose to subject... Oh. Ah, I think they've buggered it. Okay. The result, he chose to make himself a subject of the new demon lord. As things were, he had become its subordinate. Yeah, the time for us to become useful for demon lord Rimuru-sama, who gave us peace, has finally come. If it's in this labyrinth, 
I can imply deceased as I like. Unlike during the long cave life, this place is overflowing with excitement. I must make proof of our loyalty for our God that has bestowed us with such a wonderful environment. Yes, this Albert understands. Adolman nodded to Albert's response with a, Yeah. His faith had died once before. The demon lord Rimuru was chosen as the new target of his faith. Of course, Rimuru didn't know that. Rather, Rimuru was thinking, I'm sorry, I don't think you guys can win, or something like that. But Adalman and his group didn't know that, since they were in high spirits. <laughs> oh, that's a good pun. Right now, they intended to bring victory to their new master. Looking at each other's faces and nodding, Adalman was burning with motivation. Albert was also the same. And so they began to think of countermeasures against the coming foolish invaders. The three people who came from the Empire were smoothly proceeding with the capture. After parting with Damrada and entering the Labyrinth City, they had registered in the guild there. They had collected some information beforehand, but they had felt that the playful contents of the dungeon were mostly a heap of game elements. However, this place was where Zen Yu Xin's sense trap shone. As for the monster's strength that was heard about from the stores, they didn't seem to be a big deal. The problem was that the depth of the dungeon was unknown. To advance, capturing the labyrinth in one go was a no-go, as there was a limit to the amount of food that they could carry. But such a worry. Ha! Ah, it's all right. When you find the stairs, there's a doorway to an inn. It's possible to stay in that place, so there's no problem even if we don't bring much food. Ah, in addition, we could sell things that we don't need there, since there's a merchant in that place, you know? So it was really satisfactory. Moreover, there seemed to be an item called the Bracelet of Revival. It seems we are able to revive even if we die inside with this. Bark and Zen looked doubtful when Shinji explained what he heard. How to put it, in this serious world, it was only in here that the world was full of jokes. It was a very hard to describe feeling. Since they were otherworlders too, in this world possessing an ability would garner you a favorable treatment. However, it wasn't to the degree that you could do as you liked in this country. Yuki was considerably doing his best in regarding improvements to the food problem. That also dealt with the circulation of goods in the Empire, but this place seemed to have suppressed that, or rather surpassed that. Takoyaki, Okonon Okonomiyaki, and Yakisoba. On top of that, recently even crepes were about to be made. Stalls were crowded and lined side by side. The toilet problem was also dealt with perfectly, and the comfort of the inn was also wonderful. Should I live here? Say, shall we not return to the Empire? Hey! No, no, sorry, it's, it's a joke. Only a joke. Don't get so mad, Shinji. I'm not mad. I was wondering whether you consider it seriously. I also want to live here. The three looked at each other. Hmm. No, no, no. It's no use after all. Right? <laughs> Even if we complain to Yuki-san, the war is starting. R right. W what a shame. They gave up and let out a sigh. The town was lively, the food was delicious. In addition to its comfortableness, it was if the city was the centre of culture and amusement, where new pleasures were born, one after the other. The enjoyment that they were <laughs> the enjoyment that they were extremely familiar with in their previous world was a nostalgic one to them. That the Empire didn't know. Hmm. It wasn't like the Empire didn't have culture nor amusement, but it wasn't as free as in this city. Above all else, the war was close to starting. For the three of them, who knew the Empire's military strength well, it was useless to think that this country would have a chance to win against the Empire. It couldn't be helped. They cut off such regrets and challenged the Labyrinth. And now, one week had passed after the Labyrinth's capture had begun. The three members of Shinji's group were relaxing in the inn inside of the Labyrinth. Who's speaking? Ah. How should I say it? Haven't we earned a lot this week? No, it's said that this inn only offers the minimal facilities. It's still at the moderate level. Comparatively, the inn's fees are quite cheap, and unneeded equipment can be sold for money. Ha! Huh. Haven't we saved a lot? Mark happily asked a question. Zen lifted his face like he was a bit interested. Shinji took out a gold coin from his pouch like he was answering the two. Well, we saved a lot. I heard that the highest, the highest capture group record here seems to be the 39th floor. It seemed they had a hard time trying to capture the 40th floor. The piece by piece weapons that begin to appear from the opened hole seems to sell for a surprisingly high price. I wonder what it is, that hole. That weapon didn't even appear until the 40th floor, right? 
two or three of them appeared in the 50th floor, didn't they? Yes, that's right. Actually, a treasure chest above the 30th floor seems to appear very rarely. The weapon was surely of good quality. Maybe this is the reason? That's what I thought. There seems to be a secret. Even when I asked the merchants, they didn't tell me, and just smiled. Hey, that's suspicious. However, if you talk about good quality, it's this one. Look at this! While saying so, Mark took out the Minos Bardike and showed it off. It shone with a beautiful silver luster, a supreme gem made of mithril. It was an item obtained from the treasure chest guarded by the Guardian of the 50th floor. It was a unique class weapon. It's a unique class... <laughs> it's a unique class weapon, you know! Even in the Empire, we wouldn't be able to get one so easily. Or rather, in addition to that Bardike, there is that open hole, right? What might that be? Even so, it's a pretty weapon, <laughs> though the shape is weird. This is so surprising. We are seriously trying to capture this labyrinth. We earned income, we're also enjoying this. Rather, to be able to have a weapon like this freely, isn't this country more than what we had previously surmised? Isn't this bad? Mark and Zen nodded at Shinji's words. There were many more things to be considered. Firstly, the 50th floor boss was strong. Among the monsters that had appeared around the Empire, not once had a monster with that class been born in these 100 years. According to the ranking of disaster class that Yuki had established, it was an A-ranked monster. As for this monster's class classification, the Empire had also adopted it as the common way to refer to monsters, because it was easy to understand with it. There was also the reason that, if the classification was different, then it could cause problems, since this classification system was widely used by merchants. Aside from it, in the 40th floor, there was a snake which had begun to attack with a dangerous breath. It was agreeable to say that it was an A-rank monster. It would not start attacking if the enemy was outside of its breath range, though there was no escape in a narrow room. It hurled itself with its body, tough muscles. It was a monster. What? Okay, that was a really weird sentence. It was a monster that you couldn't be careless with. And it was certain that the one that they had met on the 50th floor was an over the A-rank monster. In the 30th floor, that guy's movements were handicapped with chains and weights, but in there, his movements were unrestrained. He was a dangerous boss, befitting the status of a devil amongst Demon Lord subordinates. But he wasn't an enemy that the three couldn't defeat, though it was another story if one of them could win against the enemy alone. Surely I'm worried that that monster of such a class is guarding the 50th floor. Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah. The class of the floor boss seems to be... The class of the floor boss seems to lose against the guardian class boss of every ten floors. Isn't the strength just increasing in one level from the fortieth to the fiftieth floor? Mark agreed with Shinji. After smoothly passing the fiftieth floor, they were now at the fifty-fifth floor, but they didn't worry about the next boss on the sixtieth floor. Ghost-type monsters had appeared since the fifty-first floor. They are thinking that the boss was surely an undead type. Fortunately, Mark had obtained the Minos Bardike. As for Shinji and Zen, they didn't have any weapons that were effective against the undead. Even so, they didn't think that they would lose, though it was common sense that you shouldn't let your guard down. Oh, well, even in the worst case, it seems we are not going to die, so shall we do our best without being careless? Mark and Zen also nodded at Shinji's words. Their goal was the bottomest floor. Oh, you... Oh! Sorry, I just read that word. <laughs> Their goal was the bottom-most floor, to determine the existence of or in inexistence of the research facility. It was unknown how many floors there were until the bottom, so they needed to proceed with the capture without being careless. They retired that day after they had finished confirming the plan once more, and then three days passed. They finally arrived at the stairs of the 59th floor after they had cleared the prison mark, the poison marsh, and the corrosion zone. They went down those stairs, reaching the 60th floor. The floor display increased by one number once they went down. They finally arrived in the front of the boss room. They had gotten enough rest last night, and their preparations were done. Actually, they had arrived in front of the stairs yesterday around noon, but as a precaution, they had taken a rest. It was because they had just fought desperately against three death lords, so this was an additional reason for why they hesitated to force their way through. They had the strength of the strongest class amongst ghost-type monsters. Without a doubt, it had a strength above the A-rank. When they came here, they felt that the enemy's strength had risen considerably. That was why the three rested to replenish their energy. 
For the boss after this, they thought that they wouldn't have any problems, as long as they faced it calmly. The three nodded to one another, laid their hands on the door carefully, and then pushed it open without stopping. An intense fight began. It was truly an intense battle, or at least that was my impression. While stumped, sorry, while slumped and watching the situation in the middle of a casual game of cards, I watched the boss fight seriously. The result was a complete victory for the Ghost King Adelman. It was a brilliant victory to the degree that I was dumbfounded. The analysis of the skills of the three people that had been but of the three people had been completed as well. Shinji estimated A rank EP sixty four thousand. Unique skill master medic. Method of attack, virus manipulation, air composition manipulation, and poison. Naturally, he could heal as well. Mark, estimated A rank, EP 73,000. Unique skill, thrower. He could throw anything, as long as it was graspable. It was possible to throw anything, even a monster. As there was no attribute, it had penetrating damage, a troublesome ability. Zen, estimated A rank, EP 58,000. Unique skill, observer. Instinct evasion, sense danger, sense trap, sense monster, sense presence. Anyway, he was nimble. He was the natural enemy of labyrinths. I felt the outline was like that. I would de <laughs> well, I would deliciously take their abilities into account. When you only looked at their strength, you would think that they would only win against sorry, you would think that they would win against Adalman. Nevertheless, that guy, Adalman, seemed to have grown greatly in the span of one year. Or rather, the egoless Death Lords group that didn't have any big changes in their original fighting strength were a contrast to Adalman and Albert, who were proud of their current strength, which couldn't be compared to before. Anyway, even if I didn't know it either. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh. <laughs> you were surprised, right? Actually, though it's a secret, the youngster named Arnard, or, or something similar, trained himself in Adalman's place. So Ramirez told me with a feeling of Ramirez's surprise was a success. Hmm? Arnard was training. It wasn't the Adalman group, but Arnard? As for the source of the incongruity, the Holy Knights had actually passed the 50th floor quickly and seemed to have arrived at the 60th floor, but they were defeated by one knight there, the Holy Knight who was rumored to have been the strongest several hundred years ago, Albert Adalman's trusted confidant who became a death paladin. Uh, hmm, hold on. Uh, has the quality of Holy Knights these days fallen? While saying that, he handled the sword techniques he had when he had been alive with his monster specs and overwhelmed Arnard, or so I was told. Eh? Wasn't the Holy Attribute his weakness? That's what people thought. I thought the same. The cause of the defeat of those three was tied to Adalman's trump card. Holy Demonic Inversion. With this skill's ability, the Holy Attribute was reversed into Demonic Attribute. The target was himself, so <laughs> there was no worry of there being resistance. They thought it was a joke, something like Holy Skeletons, but Adalman and Albert had nullified the Holy Attribute due to the Holy Demonic Inversion. In the first place, on top of having resistances towards physical attacks, they also had resistances against all attributed attacks. So, against the two that had overcome their holy attribute weakness, it had become a hopeless situation. With such feelings, those three were defeated quickly, and had become light particles. By the way, there was also one more trump card that was summoning a death dragon, or a ghost dragon, I was told. Hmm. Okay, they've got really weird breaks in this. I was told that after having a desperate fight with Adalman's group, the dragon zombie became their companion, and seemed to have evolved. Hmm. My master, Rimuru, were you able to witness it? Our victory is for your sake. While looking at Adalman, that shouted that loudly, this is the forces that protect the 60th four are too overpowered, right? Was my honest thought. After I calmed down, I started questioning Ramirez. With that kind of attitude, she should have something else that she was hiding. Eh? That kind of thing? I'm not hiding anything, though. Ramirez, who was clearly behaving suspiciously, became restless. It was clear that she was hiding something. Just as I threatened her, that from now on cake would be prohibited, Ramirez began to talk rapidly like a machine gun. First, 
Arnard and his group had reached the 60th floor at an early stage and seemed to have been defeated by Adolman, and then for several months they seemed to have been training in the 60th floor under the coaching of Albert. Adolman acquired the holy demonic inversion skill from Ruminus, who sometimes came to the research institute to play. Adolman helped with various research and was getting along with the vampire researchers and seemed to have caught Ruminus's interest. He seemed to have improved upon Ruminus's day and night inversion and had acquired it. Of course, as a token of gratitude, he taught Ruminus this skill too, and Arnard came in when Adolman had acquired this skill. If you thought about it, he was a man with bad timing, but because he could receive training from the strongest knight of some hundred years ago here, it could be said that he was actually very lucky. His luck was good. With such feelings, the sixtieth floor was transformed into a dangerous domain. Hey, hey, then Arnard and his group are where now? Well, maybe because of the training, they easily defeated the boss at the 70th floor, and are now in the deadlock at the 79th floor. Um, from the 61st to the 61st, from the 61st to the 70th floor is a golem zone, right? That's right, and they were defeated easily, though. The guardian of the 70th floor is the... The Guardian of the Seventieth Floor is the perfect reproduction of the Spirit Protector Colossus, which I had made to guard the floor. Because I had previously broken the one that Ramarys made in this labyrinth of spirit, I created it as an apology, but I don't need it. Oh. I don't need it, because I have Beretta, she said, so I deployed it on the Seventieth Floor. There was no worries of it being defeated, since it was a super heavyweight class with high defense, due to the demon steel. It was a guardian of steel that wasn't affected by poisons, virus, or air quality. My confidence came from my trust of the Demon Lord. Gollum. What? Uh, my trust for Demon Gollum, Demon Lord Protector Colossus, formerly the Spirit Protector Colossus. Though, Veldora, who do you think is stronger, a Dalman or the Demon Gollum? Um, without a doubt, it's a Dalman. As expected. In the past year, he seems to have greatly increased his strength. No, I think he was already strong from the start. I may have failed to notice it. Anyway, as for the Death Paladin Albert, I just noticed him for the first time, Welcome right now. To the Therefore, I was surprised by Ramirez. Okay, then starting from today, the 51st to the 60th floor will be switched with the 61st to the 70th floor. Understood. Just leave it to me. And so the inside of the labyrinth was switched. Then there was one more thing that I had in mind. By the way, the boss of the 80th floor, was it that strong? Eh, what? Well, wasn't Arnard as strong as an arc demon? Or rather, isn't it that that fellow, Adolman, has become as strong as an arc demon before I noticed? Eh, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, wait, what, what, who's, is he still to. I hate the way that they do this. They change the fonts whilst people are speaking, so it's hard to tell. Eh, ha. Uh. A shell of insect type monsters on the 80th floor were coated with demon steel, right? After the golems with slow movement, it was arranged for there to be insect type monsters with high speed movement. This is. Hey, what is going on in this place? Well, you see. I keep pressing Ramirez, who behaved suspiciously with questions, and I understood the current situation. Arnard didn't seem to be in a deadlock with the 80th floor's guardian. It was with the one before it, the floor boss of the 79th floor. His progress seemed to be hindered by the insect queen, Apito. With her super speed movement and her ultimate poison, Arnard couldn't touch her with his reflexes in sword techniques, which he had trained. What the? I felt like screaming. But, but, it's not just me. She sure was also coaching, or, or something similar. The insects were trained by him, you know? You, you, you fool! You did, did you betray me? Oh, wait, uh, you, you fool! Did, did you betray me? Because it's unfair if only Shisho has that face saying that you're unrelated. <laughs> it seemed Veldora did the same thing. It might have been my mistake to have entrusted the labyrinth to these two. Having achieved an abnormal evolution, the insect queen, Apito, seemed to be included in the ten strongest individuals in this labyrinth. Having evolved into a humanoid form, her insect-like appearance from before was gone, getting a beautiful form. It was a result of the abnormal evolution. And so, the strongest individuals in this labyrinth, there was a chance that they had the combat power of executive classes. That's... Right. I didn't want to know, but various dragons seemed to have evolved to Dragon King class as well. It had become that there were four Dragon Kings. In addition, the Guardian of the 90th Floor, 
nine-headed beast, Kamura or Kumara, guardian of the 80th floor, insect Kaiser, Zegion, floor boss of the 79th floor, insect queen, Apito, guardian of the 60th floor, ghost king, Adalman, vanguard of the 60th floor, death paladin, Albert, also the guardian of the 50th floor, Gozul and Mezur. Frankly, excluding Gozul and Mezur, there's still nine people. Rather, should it be nine beings, which were equal in strength? The Dragon Kings are Ramari's subordinates, but the remaining seven people seem to be my subordinates, though I thought that Gozul and Mezur were better off as Ramari's subordinates. <laughs> the two would do anything in gratitude for becoming Ramari's subordinates and wish to continue to serve under me. Hence, they Welcome could use the bracelets the of revival many times. Incidentally, without me knowing, they had become emotionally attached to it. Anyway, I would give a proper order to these guardians so that they don't raise their hands, except against the ones who invade the labyrinth. Otherwise, it would be impossible for an ordinary person to travel in the labyrinth. It was somewhat sad. It had become a situation where you couldn't challenge the labyrinth without having several demon lords. <laughs> Thus, during the observation of the three invaders, I noticed the current unexpected condition of the labyrinth. Oh well, it was good to become strong, but I would be uneasy if it evolved beyond my imagination. It might be the bad habit of a timid person. I praised the Dalman for his splendid deed, and I told him that the floor was changed as a reward. He was considerably moved, and said that this was a mark of his wish to be useful to me in the future. Well, I wished him to do for his best. What I noted next was that the three intruders seemed to have gone back without invading again. They may have had some objective, though they might have grown to fear the overwhelming power of the Death Pallet in Albert. Anyway, as for the death dragon that waited in the rear, there really was no need to move it. It seemed that they thought that it was useless, even if they challenged it many times. I felt like I wanted to obtain a bit more information, though it might not have been a problem. After all, it would eventually arrive. With such feelings, the curtain closed on the current riot. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, those foods look delicious. Track we whales. are the gods now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right, I need to take a quick drinky break and also check a few things. I hear these alerts going off, and I want to thank people for being such generous individuals and making my life a hell of a lot easier. All right, what have we got? Lokem has gifted a tier one sub to Nicoline. Locum has gifted another one to Andis. Austin Carbo has gifted another one to Zone Crater. Or is it Zane Crater? I can't read. It's too tiny. Thank you so much, you two generous individuals. The support is greatly appreciated. And welcome, new subscribers. You now have access to the Purple Buds. Magnan Love. <laughs> and I've just realized my deluxe head strap. The left earpiece has become loose and is dangling and slapping me in the head. Oof. All right. Uh, welcome audio. Is my cuddle buddy. <coughs> what a beautiful smile.
What are we all doing over here? I thought I'd change things up instead of people staring at me. I thought I'd stare at them. Uh, Rishi is being a little bit. I need that one. He's my cult buddy. Okay. <laughs> I love this smile. I'm so glad that I found you. Hi. I'll come out. <laughs> All right. I'm back. Who is Hmm. Why did it do that? <laughs> Bruh. <sighs> all right here, all right here, we ready, lovely people, to continue. What is this? Uh, third chapter of the evening. Chapter 147. Hmm, you can't hear that fan, can you? I'd like to angle myself this way, so that that is the center. So that the fan is just hitting my back, not my microphone. Grr, grr, grr. Mm. Perfect. Oof. Can't hear the fan, but your mic quality sounds a bit lower than usual. I don't know what that is, to be entirely honest. It's the same mic. I've not changed any of the settings, but after... Oh, God damn it. After moving my computer from my parents' place on Mother's Day, all of my audio recording have gone crap. So I'm not sure what the hell has been done to it. I'm assuming Windows has released an update, which has screwed around with all the settings I had. Which is really, really oh, unfortunate. Oh, yeah, it did. It might be the update. It's, it's super I definitely unfortunate. Had to readjust my, I definitely had to readjust my audio settings after the update, yeah. After your Windows update. Sorry? Yeah, after the uh, Windows update, I had to uh, basically readjust all of my audio settings. My, both my headset, my earphones, and my uh, microphone, I had to readjust all of them. Right, so it must have been the Windows update, then. Bastards! Why yeah. did they do that? It's happened to a few people, I think. It's so hard, because I, I can't get it back to the previous settings, which were nice and crisp, you know? They didn't pick up all the crap around. So annoying. I'll have to do some research on it later and see if I can't do it and fix it up. And, oh well, I guess that's what I get for having windows. Grr. We can never have nice things, can we? No, if it's not technical issues, it's something else that makes it sound shitty. So I apologize for the subpar recording quality, but We'll have to put up with it and get this reading out of the way. Chapter 147. The Empire that begin to move. Ah, uh, just why? Why can't you use proper English? The door opened with a loud noise. Three people entered the room. Yuki took his eyes off of the document he was reading. Yo, welcome back, he greeted the three. But, Yuki-san, it is impossible. The bottom zone was extremely hard. Yeah, it went well until the 50th floor. But after the 55th floor, Death Knights were roaming together in a platoon. I think this would be hard for ordinary night ranks. Well, the problem started from the 59th floor, though. That was dangerous. They began to speak vigorously. Maybe it was because they were excited. They didn't mind how they looked anymore. If you saw the three's clothes, they were ripped chainmail, was broken in some parts. Just by looking at it, there was no doubt that it was due to a fierce battle. The story of the three continued. The boss at that floor was a commander-ranked death knight, death lord, but three of them appeared at the same time, you know. Moreover, they were accompanied by five death knights each, you see. That was horrible. <laughs> Maybe we were relaxed until the 50th floor. The boss monster, with a cow-like face, had a strength comparable to an A-rank. 
Anyway, to have such monsters guarding it, there seems to be something in that labyrinth. Eh? So then did you guys give up at the 59th floor? No, we somehow managed to defeat the three sets of Death Knights and their commanders. But, well, the guardian of the 60th floor seems to be a named boss. It was absurdly strong, you know. Because we were almost defeated by the numbers on the 59th floor. We were already prepared for a battle of attrition on the 60th floor, though. The result was our defeat by a single humanoid-type monster. It clearly had abnormal strength, to the point of being the superior version of a Death Knight. That was impossible. Even if we try it many times, we will lose. When the three talked to such an extent, Yuki sat on a chair and settled down a bit. He drank the served tea and took a breath. Yuki thought that for... Commas everywhere that don't belong. Yuki thought that, to some degree, his expectation was correct. That's what happens when you read all the commas. Come on. Then there seems to be something over there? He questioned the exhausted trio. Apparently, the three seemed to have just left the town by foot after being defeated at the 60th floor. They regrouped with Damrada, who waited at the outskirts of the town, and immediately returned with transfer magic. This was because they feared a pursuit. They heard that the highest record for the labyrinth was the 39th floor, and there seemed to be a stalemate against the waiting boss on the 40th floor. Before they challenged it. Meanwhile, they thought that they certainly stood out by advancing and establishing new records in sight of the bat. But right off the bat, they said that they realized their mission had failed, and that they withdrew when they confirmed the existence of strong individuals guarding the place. Without re-challenging the labyrinth, after some considering, they... There's no doubt there should be some kind of facility beyond that place. The size of the labyrinth was quite something. I think it was explained or expanded through some kind of magic, though. But it didn't seem to be an artificial structure. In the first place, that place didn't seem to have something like underground ruins originally, either. In that case, uh, it was a mystery how they secured a place that wide. Only in that floor, the defense was abnormally severe. No matter how you look at it, they're guarding something. Not only the knight that defeated us, there was a skeleton magician and a ghost dragon later on. I think that the forces there were very different than our on the other floors. Right. <laughs> you could laugh, but probably if all the monsters up to the 4th 59th floor fought against the monsters on the 60th floor, well, those guys from the 60th floor would win. Shinji and Zen nodded in agreement with Mark's thought. They say that it had such an overwhelming presence. Yuki had no doubt that the floors until the 50th floor were originally the labyrinth sections for tourist attraction purposes while the 51st to the 60th floors and further were a restricted, secure area. After that, they ate a light meal, and he received the report in calm, eased state. It didn't seem that they were able to enter Tempest, but they seemed to have been able to gather information from the open... <sighs> Sorry, they, they keep removing spaces between words. So my brain starts reading it in one way, and it's wrong. From the open-hearted adventurers in the labyrinth town... They surmised or summarized such information and reported it, as well as all sorts of things that they had obtained, their spoils of war. They had got high-quality magic crystals from monsters. They were able to get some quality equipment from the treasure chests, which could be located in a room inside the labyrinth, or from the floor boss, and so on. Each one of them were rare class, while the bardike that Mark had was a unique class. They could sense that to gather so many people, they needed to set up an unthinkable amount of money and labor. Meanwhile, there was some worrying information. That is, there was a city on a certain floor inside the dungeon, the underground labyrinth. Or so they say. As expected, it doesn't seem to be a mistake. Yeah, I think it must be. It is. The point, though, is that we cannot pass the 60th floor. At least because he judged it to be absolutely impossible with only his group, Shinji reported it obediently. It was on a level that saving face was of no use, since the boss was just too strong. Hmm. Well, by the way, to what extent did you feel that boss's strength? Can you compare it with people that belong to the Imperial Guard Army to the specific? Shinji and the two were lost in thought at Yugi's question. Though it was called the Imperial Guard Army, in the army there were people like Shinji and his group who weren't interested in the rank-deciding battle. They were indebted to Yuki in various ways after they had come to this world, and had helped under his instruction in various ways. 
Since they were not interested in being in the top 100, they didn't participate in the rank deciding battle seriously either. Oh, got a blocked nose coming on. Why has this always happened to me? Furthermore, since the Corps commander had been replaced by Yuki, they had purposefully transferred from their original Armored Corps to the Mixed Army Corps that Yuki led as Corps commander. In this Corps, there was no need to participate in the useless rank deciding battle. There was a number of people that existed among them that thought like other worlders. They weren't given a large responsibility, and they didn't show off their power. They were people that lived suitably. Because the abilities of such people were not clear, it was a mystery whether the Imperial Guard Army was really the strongest group, though. But on paper, there was no mistake that this group was the strongest group in the Empire. Well, at least around the top 50th rank. I think those guys' subordinates weren't worth considering. In the end, it was just one night, right? Uh... Oh, yes. That night, we weren't able to touch him, even with the three of us, you know? Right. People in the top 30th rank might fight even me against the knight, maybe? Which reminds me, wasn't there an Arc Demon subjugation troop dispatched before the construction? That time, I participated as the campaign's doctor. Ah, the Lakeshore died in Scarlet Incident. Uh, is it true? Shinji was a survivor of that incident. I was lucky to survive. The Lakeshore died in Scarlet Incident was one of the abnormal, sorry, one of ab... God damn. Verbatim. The Lakeshore died in Scarlet Incident was one of abominable incidents that had occurred in the Empire Territory. Missing so many conjug... A vassal state adjacent to the beautiful lake revolted against the Empire and shouted for independence. That time, the king of the vassal state took a certain measure. Since his state was inferior in war forces to the Empire, that was the secret art of demon summoning, which could be considered taboo. The king gave an order to summon the strongest demon that would obey him, and the Imperial Court magician answered the order. Even if they opposed the Empire, that small country population didn't even reach 10,000 people, so there should, so there should be no chances of victory for them. But there was a reason why the king suddenly declared his country independence. A noble from the Empire desired for the princess, his only daughter. In the Empire, which had become powerful, it was impossible for the Emperor to grasp the movements of such a small country. The Margrave, who, uh, who was entrusted to rule the area, borrowed the Emperor's authority and performed atrocities. Such a spectacle was a common occurrence in the Empire. The Arch Demon appeared from the demon summoning, then destroyed that small country. The demon's desire was that the kingdom's prince... Fucking hell. Sorry. The demon's desire was that kingdom's princess. The imperial court magician, whose mind began to break the instant he saw the demon, presented the princess in response to the demon's demand. The demon spouted a wicked smile and possessed the princess's body. It accomplished... It accomplished embodiment through the princess. The king went into a rage. However, that anger was immediately replaced by fear as the demon's rampage began. In the end, a report that the small country was destroyed reached the Empire, and the demon's subjugation was decided. As if their initial response was late by a step, that place would become the location where the second guy, Crimson, was born. The beautiful lake was dyed with the blood of that small country's populace, and the water changed into a red color. Even in the several hundred years of the Empire's history, this detestable incident could be called the worst that had ever happened. Well, about the main issue at hand, I only saw its appearance during the fight at that time, though. I felt the 60th floor boss was about the same as the Arc Demon. What? Such a thing as an Arc Demon? It's on a level that we can't defeat, you know? Is it really the same? The Armored Corps, which had branches throughout the entirety of the Empire's territory, solved the Lakeshore Dried in Scarlet incident. Or so it was the official story. However, Shinji, who was there, saw that a few knights defeated the Arc Demon, which the troops couldn't fight from afar. He didn't intend to mention it, but he thought that they were probably people who belonged to the Imperial Guard Army now. Therefore, because of it, he had lost his interest in the rank deciding battle. He really felt that they lived in a different world. Ah. They might be like this, 
It would be great if a machine to check the enemy's power can be developed, though it would probably have a no significance. That knight seemed to be strong since he was a high-level swordsman. The later magician-like skeleton had an intimidating air that was comparable to the arc demon. Shinji's words didn't contain doubt, and were full of his true feelings. Then it can't be... Oh, who's speaking? I don't know who's speaking. Then it can't be helped that we lost. In addition to those powerful two, there was a dragon, right? Uh, it's a bit too cruel. The balance is too difficult, that labyrinth. Until the 50th floor, the balance was good, though. Uh, as expected, if you consider what lies on the other side, there must be a town after that place. Receiving the three's report, Yuki pondered. It wasn't an accurate conclusion, since he didn't see it in his own eyes. But as there seemed to be a floor that was guarded by an undead transformed dragon and two beings with an arc demon class power, it seemed they couldn't reach the targeted research facilities if they didn't pass that place. Oh well, it can't be helped with that ordinary means as expected. Yuki could go on and break through the labyrinth himself, but he would be noticed immediately by Rimuru and his group. He didn't participate in the labyrinth simply because they were cautious about his movements. However, Yuki wanted to achieve the goal of the labyrinth's capture somehow. He may ignore it, but Yuki had a hunch that some problems were going to occur later. Yuki pondered for a while. Thank you. You guys should have a good rest. That's right. If you want to examine the obtained equipment in detail, you guys should visit the Imperial Court in addition. Gadra Rush. Shinji, you should greet your master for the first time in a while as well, right? Also, you guys may sell the unnecessary things, since the surplus section will purchase it. <laughs> he thanked the three people and called out to them. The three who remembered that they were tired with his words showed delighted expressions, thanked Yuki, and left the room. The seeds were scattered. It might have been too early to spread this matter to the other sections. Probably the Empire would move. Yuki thought as much and quietly spouted a smile. After the three left Yuki's room, they went to the supply section to sell magic crystals and unused equipment. The reconnaissance ended in fail. <clears throat> the reconnaissance ended in failure, but they were able to get a considerable income in a short amount of time. Their salaries, provided by the army, were more than the average income of a commoner but not to the extent where they could live luxuriously. On the other hand, to leave the army and become independent, the conditions in this world were very severe. Being able to live a steady life was already attractive. Hey, hey, where did you guys obtain this magic crystal? This is something hardly seen recently. Isn't this a high-quality one? The equipment here is great, too. It's a weapon made with pure demon steel, though I'm bothered by this whole thing. Ha 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 ha! it was obtained as a secret! Please don't ask again! After having such an exchange, they had a good rest in their respective rooms that day. The forced march had ended. Their bodies and minds might have been dead tired. When Shinji woke up, it was the evening of the next day. Shinji, who woke up, contacted the other two. Zen was up, but it seemed like Mark was still sleeping. Actually, his fatigue would be great for sure, since Mark mostly played an active role. The three met and decided to have dinner. In the Empire's capital, the three had a meal at a high-class restaurant. It had been a while since they had last had such a luxury. Yugi didn't tell them to hand over the spoils, and was happy to give everything to Shinji and his colleagues. When permission to plunder is not given, the spoils obtained in the middle of a military campaign belonged to the military. In this case, they couldn't complain, even in the worst-case scenario where everything was taken away. Well, in most cases. However, if all things and money obtained were taken away, we might seriously think about migrating away, right? The two agreed with Shinji's remark. One gold coin was the equivalent of 100,000 yen. The market price was similar in the empire. The gold coins in the market were issued by the Dwarven Kingdom. The quality was standardized and the common gold coin. They could use the original Empire gold coin, but there would be an inspection of the money by the money changer, and the fee was larger too. Therefore, the majority of transactions were done using the gold coins made by the Dwarf Kingdom. Uh, the gold coins made by the Dwarf Kingdom were inscribed with magic and counterfeit God, with magic. Any counterfeit money would be exposed immediately. If by chance a counterfeit was exposed, it would result with the death penalty. Because of that, there were only a few idiots that counterfeited money in the present. 
The gold coins that Shinji's group obtained from the Labyrinth City, which was the satellite city of the monster's country, Tempest, were without a doubt made by the Dwarven Kingdom. It could be used inside the Empire without any problems. The army had an annual salary system. The promotion was also included, calculated and collected the next year. However, taking into consideration the people who didn't have the money on hand, they had devised a system where they gave out daily allowances from the reserve funds. For an ordinary soldier, it was ten gold coins. Their annual salary was equivalent to one million yen. Because the army took care of the life necessities, food, clothing and shelter, it was a large sum of money for poor people. The gold coins that they obtained were altogether more than 100 pieces. Mark and Zen's rank were first lieutenant. Because Shinji had the qualification as an army doctor, his command rank was two ranks higher. He was a major. Because other worlders are given preferential treatment, even at the lowest they will receive treatment as second lieutenants. Of course, the salary provided to, by, sorry, by the Empire in a year was more than, more than for an ordinary soldier. But even so, it was around 50 to 100 pieces of gold coins. The amount of money they had earned during this short-term mission was greater than their annual salaries. Not to mention that the unique class equipment and such were things that they couldn't get throughout their lifetimes unless they paid hefty sums for it. Being unable to stomach Damrada's lavish lifestyle was the biggest reason Mark hated him. In short, it was jealousy. There was no other meaning. Mark didn't like Damrada, whom he didn't know who was just living a good life, while he himself was personally just a dog of the army. In addition, he was disgusted with himself, who thought about such things, and took out his anger more strongly on Damrada. Shinji could understand Mark's feelings, but he could satisfy himself with only the salary he received as an army doctor. If he said something careless, it would disturb Mark's mood. They were thinking about something based off the information that they were able to get in this mission, that... Even if they didn't particularly cling to the military, the three of them could live together in the Labyrinth City, couldn't they? Or something like that. Sure, the Empire was the leading force in culture and technology. It was an excellent capital. The food was delicious, and the living conditions were comfortable, too. As long as they had money, they were able to enjoy a fulfilling life. Comparable to their former world. But they were more or less civil employees. They might be given a dangerous mission, and so they couldn't be careless. In that regard, that dungeon was very satisfying. After all, they didn't have to worry about dying. They were half in doubt, but because they had experienced it themselves, they had no choice but to believe it. If they didn't have to worry about dying, wasn't it better for them to live interestingly over there? It was a normal thing to think so. Even if there was money, there was no meaning in it if there was no entertainment. Over there, there was a place called the Colosseum, and it seemed it could be used freely on its day off. Various sports games like soccer and baseball were played over there, and they had already investigated that the adventured citizens enjoyed it. About the taste of the food, it was equal to the Empire. Though it was equal, it had a nostalgic taste that couldn't be reproduced by the people of this world, and it attracted their hearts as people from Earth. To be frank, it was because they were indebted to Yuki that they didn't have the feeling like changing sides. When the war began, they would be considered deserters, but fortunately, right now was a peaceful time. If it was now, it would be easy to retire from duty and leave the army. The problem is the war, right? Mark muttered. It was the reason they couldn't decide. That was caused by the problem he just stated. War would certainly begin. Otherwise, they would have left this country long ago and would have moved to the Labyrinth City. Which side do you think we'll win? Just saying... What will we do if we receive an order to attack that city? The three looked at each other. There was a feeling of unpleasantness in attacking that city they liked. <sighs> oh man, I can't breathe. Right after they had stayed there for a while. But they, judging from the strength of the boss inside that labyrinth, expected that the strength of the strongest person in Monsters Country Tempest would be unthinkable. If you think about it, normally you would think that the guardians that protected the research facilities were strong, right? But the people that belong to that country's army are monsters, right? If so, the guardians in the labyrinth aren't the strongest, are they? <coughs> I think the same. At least, the demon lord Rimuru might be an exception. In the past, a city seemed to have been annihilated by a wicked dragon named Veldora. Actually, a similar thing seemed to have happened. I think that an arc demon is equal to a tactical nuclear weapon on Earth. 
That's right. The war is about numbers. Even if several of the bosses appear, it will be useless. With our class, we can't fight against ten people. I think it's meaningless. The three talked till late that day, but in the end the talk was settled. It wasn't settled. At least they had only decided to leave the army before the war began, and parted on that day. Sorry, oh, fucking hell. And parted on that day. Oh, why is everything so blurry all of a sudden? So it just slowly degrades my eyes as I'm reading. In the office where a splendid desk was placed, a man with one eye was sitting in a high-class chair. His left eye was covered with an eye patch. His appearance was of a skinny man around forty. His name was Calgurio. He was the corps commander of the armored corps. Corps, ah, ain't that word, that boasted Welcome of the greatest the power in the hall. empire. On the desk in front of him, a few magic crystals were placed. They were high-quality magic crystals, which had high purity and would become sources of magic energy. In his hand was a sword. It was made with high-quality demon steel, and the skill with which it was made could be grasped at the highest level. <sighs> okay. It was a splendid sword, equal to the ones which the best craftsmen of the Dwarven Kingdom forged. It was said that the supplies department purchased it, but it had a clear distinction from the items sold within the Empire. A subordinate of a high-ranked noble who was on familiar terms with Calgurio got his hands on the supplies department and reported if there was any outstanding items. That was the case this time. Many nobles came over with indecent smiles and reported it to Calgurio. Calgurio's origin was as a low-ranked noble, with high-ranked nobles... Sorry. The high-ranked nobles would not bore themselves to talk to him. If he was a civil employee, those nobles were looking down on Calgurio. But they knew how to be courteous towards the head of a corps of the greatest faction. Thus, their relations were equal. Hmm. It seems to be impossible to harvest magic crystals of this purity from monsters that generate naturally, so they say. If we want to aim for a stable supply, we should secure the place that produced this magic crystal. Like that. They demanded that Calgurio... Sorry, they demanded of Calgurio in the report. There was no thing as a high-ranked noble that moved while disregarding their own profit. There was no such thing as they reported it with good intent or something like that. There was another story that he worried about. It was about the sword that Calgurio held in his hand. Many times, this unusual item seems to have a mysterious effect. Such an exaggerated thing was said when he came to buy it. If it was examined, it would likely strengthen the Empire's army in the end. It was sold at one hundred gold coins due, due to such a reason, but surely there was something that Kogurio was worried about. There was a hole in the sword. Did the hole have any meaning? Calgurio couldn't decide. Therefore, he handed the sword over to the technical group after he was troubled. If it was them, there would be some discoveries. When the result was brought a few days later to Calgurio, he was surprised, but determined. Because the sword attracted the best craftsmen among them, he noticed it. Also, the origin of the sword was from inside a dungeon that belonged to a certain country, and when he learned of that, Calgurio drafted a strategy inside his mind. He was thinking while smiling thinly. When the time came, he must never allow anyone to have a head start, and, despite having a chance to obtain such important information, he thought that his colleagues were pitiful to not notice this. After all, his, this fellow was as... <laughs> God damn it. After all, this fellow was a foolish upstart. His head didn't stop thinking while sneering at his colleagues. How much could he enjoy the maximum profit if he did? He was thinking about the opportunity to apply the in... in uh, to apply the initiation of the military campaign to the Emperor while thinking about it deeply. Author's Note By Calgurio's action, the Empire began to move. It wasn't necessary to write it, but it was for the time being. In case Clayman goes for the labyrinth capture, Clayman, who's Clayman? Can he capture the former 60th floor? The probability is low. He could surely lose if he took on those three. Guru, the magician, knight, and dragon at the same time. I don't understand. I don't really realize that. Yeah, okay. Give me a moment. I'm going to, uh... Wipe my lenses, because I think that might be what's causing issues. I don't know, I can't even read the notification that's popping up anymore. Mm. Grr, grr, grr. Yeah. 
During my chair. Oh yeah, no fee. Eggs is high. Let me say hi back. No fee says hi back, Eggs. Man, I never knew that no fee joined. Hi, no fee. I close my eyes, I can see only your mm -hmm. eye. Like Ooh. Yeah. If I could hug you, I would. An overlay in my, eyes, in my eyelids. There you go. Love you, Nephi. You're okay. Love your bricks. Yeah, I close my eyes, and if you don't have your eyes open, uh, I... I see nothing, so but then I always see your eye left over whenever I close my eyes. <laughs> oh, and when uh, when when will I get the the way eyes ahead. work? It's very interesting. <laughs> 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 really want that hat, huh? Yes. Yeah. You still need a second eye. So fluffy. <laughs> not not the hat. <laughs> not, the hat isn't fluffy. I'm really tired. I think. <laughs> yeah, they're so fluffy. I'll lay down. Oh, he realized. Want me to give you the hat matching colors for you? I'll be in VR though. I like it. I like how it is looking. Oh, it look now. Uh, oh, okay. Say hi to my friends. Why are they down? Yeah. Why is Andy so floppy? Fluffy. He's so fluffy. I'll see you. <laughs> All right. So fluffy. He's back. Uh huh. Now I can see things clearly again. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. Rain is gone. I can it's see all rain. obstacles in my way. Are you sure about that? No. Ah, you booped me. But I am quite sad. I just double checked. So with the deluxe audio head strap, the earpieces have this weird little like rotation assembly. Really cool feature when you want to clamp them over your ears. The one on the left hand side, there's a tiny, extremely small piece of plastic that goes on an inner ring that allows it to clamp in. Apparently that's snapped off, which means I need to buy another deluxe head strap if I want to keep using it. Otherwise I'm going to have to okay. tape it in position permanently. Oh. <laughs> I might just do that Lovely. actually. Hello yeah, there, Nerf Nerf. Just taking a closer look at your new avatar. Oh, 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 okay then. Are you ready? Oh, the face is stuck. I'm ready. <laughs> Give me a moment. That's the exact... You basically have the exact same grin that I wanted for my new avatar, but that commission got decommissioned. The exact same <laughs> what that you want for your new what, sorry? Grin. Oh, grin. yes. But I made this Big myself, grin. so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> How many chapters you left? So fucking big you can make it. <laughs> We're on the second last chapter. Eww. Nice. Yes, this is fun. I just, obviously I make my, all the blend shapes on this have been made by myself. Because the face had absolutely none, so. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
I have returned. Holy butts, why is it so laggy here? Um, <laughs> so, um, Anders says while well, Magdal's gone through a story, it's a uh, rainbow, 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 rainbow. Wow. Wow. Magnificent. Beautiful story. Rainbow? Rainbow? Rainbow. Rainbow. We, 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 just, we just had a lovely so story from Mantis while we were waiting. Mantis, that is the most beautiful yeah. story. No, wow. Dumble. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta take Andis a picture run. of this. Run, I didn't Andis. know you could do that. Um, I guess it's perfect time to say <laughs> smile. <laughs> 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 I need that. I need that. Oh, I'm gonna. I'll see, I'm gonna send. It to, I'm gonna send it to everyone. I need that photo. Oh. I need oh. that photo. Wait, are you in? Make a story. Make a story. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> What do you mean? Why don't I want people to be sleeping? What? Words! They fail me! I can't find my ebook reader anymore! Nani! There it is. So yes, VRChat decided halfway through our little conversation that it did not like me anymore. And told me, no. You're not allowed to exist. Crash. No, it didn't crash. It just booted me back to my home for no reason. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's, it's like, no, nothing for you. All right, let's continue. Second last chapter of the evening. Chapter 148, a decision made too late. Whew, I need to get some food after this. I'm starving again. In a spacious and well-lit comfortable room, an old man, Gadrav, the Imperial Court Mage, invited his three guests to the room. He showed them the chair. Whilst feeling obliged, the three sat on the chair, as suggested by the strict mage. <laughs> Sorry, okay, here's the problem with not proofreading. Let's go over this just quickly, a little lesson. The way that that was just written, all three of these gentlemen are now sitting in one chair together. Maybe on each other's laps. <laughs> the three oh, sat on the chair, as suggested by the strict mage. Gadra watched the three and chuckled. Although he have become a full-fledged soldier, his disciple's nervousness towards him was still amusing. He knew that his disciple Shinji and his friends will come visit him from a prior contact, and the investigation on the equipments that entrusted to him was also ended. God damn it. However, he's still pondering... Ugh. He's still pondering whether he should inform them, honestly or not. The equipment's astounding performance was something that he should be astonished by. Anyway, first of all, he decided to return the barbite and the bracelet, which, in his hand... Mm. All right. Let's just, um, change this on the fly. First of all, he decided to return the barbite and the bracelet, which he held in his hand, to Shinji. Shinji received the equipment which Gadra held out, and handed it over the Bardike to his friend with the large build, Mark. Then he tucked away the bracelet into his pocket. At the same time, after it was over... So, Shisho, this bracelet, do you have any ideas what this bracelet is? Out of curiosity, he asked the main question. The effect of its automatic revival after the wearer died is only possible in the specific place. You wouldn't have found a magic item like this that possesses such ability, no matter how many records were checked. However, it's not like there's nothing that comes to mind. Hmm. Impatient as usual, I see. Well, I can't criticize others either. I will say the conclusion. It can't be appraised as magic. I let the technology department to examine the other two. But I'm afraid that the mystery of these bracelets will not be solved. Even so, it's not like there is nothing that comes to mind. So the question is, you lot, where was this bracelet obtained from? What is the place called? And so, in order to ascertain that, Gadra asked a question in return. Gadra didn't hear about the origins from this, sorry, of this bracelet. He only received a request saying to examine the effects of the bracelet. 
three bracelets were handed to him, and he was asked to check what kind of ability it has. He only heard a bit of detail of it at the time. The effect of the automatic revival is possible only in a specified limited location, or some unthinkable thing like that. When Shinji handed the bracelet, he said that he wanted Gadra to examine it without having any strange prejudice, but Gadra didn't hear the story in detail. The result? It's impossible to be analyzed by magic. Due to its indefinite change of the spirit's waves, every interference by magic was obstructed. Because the wave of all attributes was intermingled with each other, complicatedly, it's in a state which had specific patterns that couldn't be calculated. Therefore, Gadra gave up and ended up asking the technology department to deal with it. Asking the technology department is like admitting he lost and it hurt his pride. But Gadra's personality was to prioritize gain over pride. While feeling frustrated too, he handed the remaining two bracelets over. Sorry, over. Requesting an investigation. The results aren't out yet. I've tried appraising it myself with magic, but I failed. I couldn't find any clues. I thought the failure was due to my lack of ability. Oh, that's the wrong voice. I thought my failure was due to the lack of ability. But even she saw, too. The place is the west side of the Empire. It's the opposite end, the other side of the Great Jura Forest, or referred to as the West Side of the Forest. It's the satellite city of the emerging country governed by Demon Lord, called the Monstrous Country Tempest. In that city, or at the underground dungeon, the bracelet is an item that can be purchased upon entry into the multi-layered underground structure. Then, as they sold it to us, they also gave us the explanation about the labyrinth. We were skeptical at first, but we personally experienced it with our bodies. Without a doubt, it has the effect to revive even when we died. Ha <laughs> Labyrinth, is it? Then, can this bracelet be used multiple times? No. Once you die, it will become light particles and disappear. Well, in this case, you will be outside the labyrinth, and you need to enter again. When you paid the fee, it seems you have to buy it again. See, that's, that's Paul right there. That was someone actually speaking. God damn it. So this dungeon collects admission fees, or rather anyone can enter? Yes, that's right. Apparently the Demon Lord Rimuru seems to run it as a tourist attraction. What? Demon Lord, huh? Gadra was rendered speechless by Shinji's explanation. If you think about it, this is too terrible of a conversation. A Demon Lord is referred to as an enemy of humanity. The Demon Lord is an absolute existence, and it's wise to go on the basis of mutual non-aggression. The reason why the Demon Lord rule over an affluent territory is to nullify the Demon Lord's reason and what? Reason and ambition for the territories of other countries. Due to this, Gadra is on the opposition position regarding the Empire's ambition to expand towards the West Side. His futility of attrition, opposition, ambition, position. <laughs> God damn it. Sorry. One year ago, the Farmer's Kingdom perished for incurring the Demon Lord's wrath. While the people weren't directly harmed, but the king suffered a gruesome end, and the country perished too. With this incident as the cue, there seemed to be some kind of movements among the demon lords. As for the newly created eight-star demon lords, or the Octogram, notification was sent to humanity. There are four demon lords whose name is known widely. Guy, Milim, Leon, and the one in the topic, Rimuru. Gadra didn't know what other western nations thought about this, but he believed that it was dangerous move to anger Rimuru as he's a demon lord. <laughs> I'm just reading it verbatim now. His name was known because he takes too many intensive actions. And the important thing is, even though Clayman, who was one of the former ten great demon lords, is gone, the newcomer Rimuru has left quite the impression. As indicated by that, the West Side has an existence that's more frightening than Clayman. So is the point. Besides, it's to the point where there's no survivor amongst the 10,000 people that partook in Farmus' military campaign. In the case of an ordinary war, when the casualties were over 30%, it would mean this campaign is a failure. At that point, they would need to surrender. They thought that their life would not be taken if they surrendered because of the rumored personality of the Demon Lord, but the result was a massacre. Were they, annihil were, they were annihilated without a chance to surrender? Or was it because of subordinates' reckless action? But the most frightening thing above all might be his ability to impregnable defense that enclosed them and gave them no chance to <laughs> escape. 
Yeah. I feel like I'm doing those bad fanfiction readings again. They were fun. The army well over 10,000. If there's no one survived, it's not an event that common sense can be applied to. It might be possible if a large-scale spell was invoked. Enclosing the whole army with a speed that didn't allow them to escape if it's a nuclear strike magic. When using that large-scale magic, it would be a miracle if the opponent haven't deployed any defense barriers while the magic power for casting such great magic was being gathered. If such element cleared all the requirement, it might not be impossible for Gadra either, though this is all very unlikely. Above all, the effects on the natural environment due to terraforming via nuclear strike magic was not been confirmed. He wouldn't kill the runaway enemies by some kind of unknown attack nor command a large number of subordinates to lock down the enemy and annihilate them. <laughs> it's frightening. That's how he honestly feel. To especially wage war against such opponents, Truth be told, the higher-ups of the military wouldn't be able to avoid incompetent criticism. I should probably remonstrate to the Emperor about this, huh? With such a thought, he let out a depressed sigh. After a change of mood, he decided to answer the, his disciple, Shinji's question. Well, it's about the Demon Lords. Do you guys know how many Demon Lords there are? Yes. Is it eight people, right? Eh? Isn't it ten people? Wait, hold on. Ah. Eh? Isn't it ten people? No, shouldn't it be eleven people now? But they made some changes last year. Gadra sighed and began his explanation. Those idiot civilian employees' bad habits. They can't even do an intelligence gathering. I can see them be the first to die. There are eight demon lords. They refer to themselves as the eight star demon lords. Uh, it may be that they have ability that compared to a star. In fact, it's said that a newbie, Rimuru, alone has the strength to match an army. The higher-ups of the military seem to think this remark about Rimuru is just boasting, but I personally think it's the truth. But this time, let's put this aside. Among them, one of the demon lords is called the Fairy of the Labyrinth. What do you think about this? These words made the three held their breaths. Timidly, Shinji state his thought. Labyrinth. As in dungeons? So he said. Nodding gravely, Gadra took out a copy of a book and showed it to the trio. In the Ulgracia Republic on the west side, there's a dungeon known as the Dwelling of the Spirits. It's said that the labyrinth expands in the underground, or in the air, in this world. But the truth is different. In a sense, this is correct, yet also wrong. According to the books, the Dwelling of the Spirits not only houses spirits, but it's also the resident of their queen whose body changed from a spirit into a fairy. This queen is one of the demon lords, the one known as the Fairy of the Labyrinth. Gadra's words weighted heavily on the trio. In addition, the entrance to the labyrinth seems to be only located in the Ulk National Park, but has now vanished. Not long after that, the demon lord Rimuru has identified himself. Then an underground labyrinth was opened in the public after a few months later. So he continued. By now, he's convinced there's no mistake. As for Shinji and his friends, they can't utter a denial. Shisho, did you realize that? He barely had a reply. Gadra laughed maliciously. <laughs> Naturally, you idiot. Collecting information is the fundamental of everything you know. For war, and also economy. If a person aspires to pursue magic, it's all the more. Diligence is not enough. And also, one more thing. You lot were defeated by such opponent. It's as expected. Eh? Shishu, why is it like that? I've asked you, Kidono, about where and what you do not doing. At that point when the answer come, it's good as not to decide anything. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Shishu. Shinji was ashamed. His face dyed red. As a magician, his master had told him many times how inadequate was his information collecting. He felt ashamed that he wasn't able to realize it till someone pointed it out. But it's certainly a bit harsh to compare the crafty Gadra, who already lived for many years in this world with Shinji, who was lacking in sense of tension due to being raised in Japan. Anyways, Shinji and Ko using the opportunity for some serious reflection as well. <laughs> the information about the 60th floor guardian was obtained. There is a story of a noble-minded priest accompanied by a great holy knight from a long time ago. Such people were turned into devil. It's a story that was agreeable even if it's said that their threat can be compared to an arc demon. Uh, 
uh, who's speaking? I don't know whether this is the truth or a lie. In this book, the blade of the Holy Knight Albert could cut even an arch demon. So it was written. I'm afraid he was a master of formidable sword. Hearing his words, Shinji is fed up. If that's so, I can't possibly win. That was his state of mind. Since he was uncertain, it can't be helped if he couldn't revive. If he couldn't revive, he would definitely be dead. No, you think? In the future, in order to avoid exposing his comrades to unexpected dangers, he would definitely collect more detailed information, sworn Shinji. However, this decision was made a bit too late. That's because they have already been caught up in a new crisis. The door of Gandra, the Imperial Court Magician's room, opened, and several soldiers entered. The sudden turn of events shocked Shinji and Co. But the situation has begun to proceed, and due to Shinji and Co.'s late decision, they have lost the chance to escape from the Empire. So that was an exercise in me cringing every few sentences. This is how the entire book is written, and I translate it on the fly in my brain, which is why half of the words I say bugger up. I quite, I quite like reading it like this, though, because it makes everyone listen to how I have to understand it. Let's do the last chapter of the evening, verbatim. Chapter 149, Night Before the War Begin. An imperial conference was about to begin in front of the Emperor. The situation was different from the time of peace. Tension spread among the civil officers that sat in a row, much less the officers that participated. People that didn't have any relation to the conference didn't come near the big conference room, as if they had felt the atmosphere there. Everyone felt that this time the conference was different from a usual one. When the arrival of Emperor was announced, everybody lowered their head at once. The Union Emperor, Ludra Nam Ul Welcome Nazca, to the, reading the top hall. of Nazca Nam Riam Ul Meria Eastern Alliance Union Empire, the strongest country. To ensure that his true disposition would not be known to others, his figure was hidden behind the blinds and could not be seen. To make him the one and only supreme ruler, there were only a few people who could give their opinion to the Emperor. In the conference room, there were a little less than 100 people, the leader of each corps and their aides. The elites of the guard army were sitting in a row. The ministers that conducted the government of the country and grand noble houses that were the center of the country. All distinguished faces gathered and lowered their heads. When the emperor glanced at the gathered people from the other side of the blinds, he took a seat with an uninterested mood. The prime minister took it for a sign and signaled to everyone with his eyes. Everyone understood it and simultaneously words of salutation resounded, causing the large room to tremble. The emperor commanded with one hand. Enough with the stiff formalities. We don't desire such things. Just uh, start. The Emperor ordered to start the to start the conference. Thus, the grand conference that would decide the start of the war, that would be carved in history, began. First, what was the reason to start the war? It was a silly question. They thought it was because the Emperor wanted it. Was that possible? The opinion was greatly divided. There was someone who advocated a careful basis, and there was someone who insisted on invading directly from the front. The civil officers insisted that they should begin with diplomatic negotiations, such as threats and other tactics. Starting the war was the Emperor's intention. There was no place to raise an objection. If there was someone that said the preparation was lacking and the chance of winning was low, that person would receive criticism of being called an incompetent who could not do any preparations properly. Anyway, not only had their preparations been completed, there were people who were confident in their absolute military force. There was no one who would make such an assertion be known. However, With all due respect, Your Majesty, I'm against it. One person reported that he was against the war. Gadra, the Imperial Court Magician. He was the person that was called the Empire's Great Magician. Gadra spoke out, without fear of the Emperor, and told the Emperor his own thoughts. I think there should be no problem if we only attack the west side. However, the wicked dragon Veldora is in the great Jura forest. Also, it's the territory ruled by demon Lord Rimuru, who made his name widely known recently. It seems like that the wicked evil dragon has joined forces with demon Lord Rimuru. To act of mutual non-aggression is the usual cause against the demon lord. It's a different story if it is the other party that starts it, though. Was there any kind of meddling from this side? Some of the civil officials nodded in agreement with Gadra's opinion, but... You fool! Have you become a coward, Roshi? 
If it's us, the Empire's strongest magic beast core, we can handle someone like Demon Lord, you know. What insolence does... God, I don't know who's talking. What insolence does Gadjadano intend to go against the Emperor's thoughts? Ha ha ha! Roshi Dono, you have grown old! Your magic knowledge is the Empire's treasure! Although you have cooperated in the development of the new dark magic weapon in the Armored Core, I cannot let that remark go! Are you a coward? Gadra was bathed in sneers from both the military authorities and the nobles. Amongst the ministers that only thought about the imagined profits they would get was one person who rolled his eyes and didn't seem to be amused from Gadra who objected the war. <sighs> you lot, do you understand? That wicked dragon is the strongest species in this world that blows over storms, you know. Roshi! Oh, I don't know who's talking. I don't understand. The Empire Army is different from before. We have learned the knowledge of various places of the many different worlds. The thing called science. We have obtained a new technology system which is called magic science. With this new technology, our military force has increased its power dozens of times from the first generation. Isn't it because of that outdated magicians like you, even now, you still have a bitter experience of having your own core disarmed? Calgurio, the commander of the Armored Corps, argued against Gadra's words. In fact, the Magic Corps was once called one of the Empire's three great corps and was dissolved. Nowadays, any capable person will get assigned to the technology department or other department. The reason there was no movement from the Empire in these few decades was because a military reorganization had happened and given birth to the new three great corps. Armored Corps, the corps, was science, the corps where science and technology of the different world fused as magic technology. The Empire's corps with the largest size, the number of total soldiers that could be mobilized exceeded two million. However, in reality, the number of soldiers who could participate immediately in the military deployment is one million, since... Some of the forces were on standby in every place in the Empire. Even so, the scale of the Corps could be said as abnormal. It was arranged to select the best war potential for this time. As for the breakdown, Armored Remodeled Legion. Legion of soldiers who received magic remodeling by magic and technology of a different world. Individual ability increases and has ability considerable to B to A ranks. Even at the lowest, the core consisted of people stronger than C plus rank. Number of soldiers affiliated, 700,000 people. It's the star unit that was called the Empire Main Force. Magic Tank Division. Magic Tank 4000 Unit. Number of soldiers affiliated to 200,000 people. The Empire Secret Weapon, piloted by five people. The main armament is Magic Cannon. Magic Cannon. Optimized by other world world's technology, the cannon amplifies magic and fires it. Aerial Fighter Legion. Airshipped 400 aircraft. Number of soldiers affiliated, 100,000 people. One aircraft can be boarded up to 400 people. To operate, it needs about 50 staff. The other personnel is engaged in bombardment relations. It's useful as transportation means. It could be said that there's no concept of air supremacy in this era. While the enemy is caught unprepared, it's a threat that can become a transport for a large-scale military deployment. <laughs> a lot of magic reinforcement cannons were installed on the airship. Many members of former Magic Corps were affiliated with this corps. The above was the actual force of the Armored Corps. In the Armored Corps, half of the affiliated member were given forced magic remodeling. The degree of remodeling fluctuated suitably, but everyone's ability increased greatly, although there were some degree of differences. It's the same with the soldiers standing by in various places in the Empire. Everyone had strength above a certain level. It overwhelms even the union of other countries in both quality and quantity. It's a corps that showed the might of the Empire. The Magic Beast Corps captured various magic beasts, bred, strengthened, and trained them. The culture of the magic beasts was by DNA analysis, the technology of the other world, and the strong people of the Empire riding on their back. Inborn strong people were said to have the blood of the hero who played an active part in the old times. If magic remodeling was a technique to change an abilityless person into a hero, they were born as heroes. Born heroes having an overwhelming ability. A minor corps with only 30,000 personnel was said that one of them had the ability of 10,000 people. But the magic beasts they rode all had the strength appropriate to A rank. It's a corps with only 30,000 people that call themselves the strongest elite corps that the Empire boasts of. The last entry, the mixed corps. This corps, so to speak, was a mish and mash. 
The den of dropouts, where black sheep were gathered, or so the people generally thought. However, while it may be true that they were dropouts, it didn't mean they didn't have ability. It may be said that various experiments and new traits and trials were carried out by this corps. The corps only the corps owned their own technology development department. It also have magic research department. Their potential was unknown. This corps employs the most otherworlders as combatants. The total number of soldiers, two hundred thousand people. However, a lot of them were intelligence officers and general office work soldiers. The number of soldiers that can interact sorry. The number of soldiers that can actually fight were around one hundred thousand people. In disfavor of magic remodeling, people who can't ride magic beasts and people of the former magic corps that have no place to go were taken into this corps. But it had been already recognized that the forces were more than the former magic corps, although it was such a jumble. Despite its newly created status, it tied against the armored remodeled legion in a mock battle, though it's under the same number condition. Oh, these senses! Ugh. Though it's under the same number condition. A high future was anticipated from this core. Its flexibility came due to the condensation of the good points and then reorganized it. It's a core that was established with such a purpose. I hope this isn't too cringy that I'm just reading it as is. These are the Empire's new three great core. Cores, core, corpse, corpse, dead bodies. A large force, 1,130,000 soldiers, may went to the front line without any problems, even if an order for a military campaign was given right now. Judging from the prediction about the West Side total military force and armaments that the Intelligence Bureau obtained, the Empire's army could be said to be too overwhelming. Calgurio could speak openly because he had confidence as he was within the strongest and, in addition, the core with the largest personnel. There are many people who fear Veldora, but Calgurio was not afraid of it. After all, it's only a dragon, right? So he thought. There are dragons residing in the Quanat Great Mountain Range. It's surely a strong monster. In case of lesser dragon that inhabits the foot of the mountain, when an individual grew up to medium dragon, its strength becomes more than an A-rank. The force of one squadron from the Armored Remodeling Legion is needed, even if it's just an individual. He handled the dragon subjugation in military drills several times, and he familiarized himself with the information about such things. Even so, on the contrary. The more he familiarized himself with it, the more he could come up with countermeasures against an individual, even for a dragon. It's just one dragon. What do we have to fear? Calgurio reached such a state of mind. A monster's strength is decided on the amount of energy. It doesn't change no matter how strong an individual is. The reason why a dragon is strong is because it can act with guile, sorry, with agile movements, compared to its mass. Also, the extreme hardness of a dragon's scale. Its breath attack was dangerous too, but its true nature was the amount of energy. If that is the case, there's no need to fight from the front. There's also weakening with magic, and there's also new technology called magic cancer, magic essence disturbance radiation. It can obstruct a magician's casting, a new technology that enables the weakening of a monster in battle. The victory will be certain if he just fired the magic cannon of the main armament of the 4,000 magic tank, but he need to be extremely cautious if there are countermeasures. He experimented it with the captured dragon, but he was able to kill it with one shot of the magic cannon, even if it was a young dragon of A-rank. As for a monster... Energy, magic essence amount, which was the basis of its existence, will be disturbed if exposed to the magic cancellor, and it will be difficult for it to take an action. In short, it's weakened. If we fire a volley of main armaments of the 4,000 magic tank to the weakened target, the annihilation will be certain, even if it's an ancient weakened dragon. The content of the strategy that Calgorio devised for battle against Veldora is as follows. Encirclement by 300 airship. Containment of Veldora's action with magic cancellor. Approximately 200,000 standby remodeled soldiers to confront, sorry, to confine Veldora. Volley of main armament by 4,000 magic tank. That's all. Airship is a secret weapon that can be said as the fruits of magic technology. Its maximum speed can surpass us the speed of sound. It's impossible for creature with flesh and body to a... Sorry, YouTube notifications just popped up. I think someone just went live. May have been trapped, man. Its maximum speed can surpass the speed of sound. It's impossible for creature with flesh body to escape from this speed without depending on magic. The winning chance of the battle can increase with the accumulation of information, after all. The airship had buried a great number of dragon, and accumulation of information is everything. 
Gargurio was convinced of the victory and had an absolute confidence. Welcome to the reading Gajra, hall. The Imperial court magician, an ex-hero that once called the have grow old now. What? An ex-hero that once called that have grew old by now. <sighs> I'm sorry. My brain still couldn't process that, even though I've been doing this, just reading it. <laughs> he will be at Calgurio mercy if he threaten him with several soldiers equipped with magic cancer without being able to resist anything. But Calgurio think that he must not lack an etiquette as Gadra is still a hero. <laughs> is someone playing music? Oh. Oh, I see. When I click that notification... Give me a second, everybody! Ah! I'm pretty sure I've got someone else's stream One. running now. <laughs> One. Don't be so literal. No, it's not that but one. But it's dead. What I said and what I meant were clearly two separate individual realizations of reality. How dare you? I, I can't find the screen. No! <laughs> Where is it? No! What tab is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, no! I can't get to it. Mm -ba. Mm -ba. Mm -ba. Oh, yes, it is Trap Man. Well, we all got a lovely little dose of Trap Man's stream there. <laughs> Bloody hell. Bloody. Well, it's like with OVR drop. When you're using the little cursor thing and you hit the X, for some reason it's like, oh no, you didn't do that. You clicked, I want to watch this now. Sorry about that, everybody. Let's get back to reading a poorly, poorly, poorly proofread story. Uh, ba -ba <laughs> he was a person of the past, after all. Even till now, old people still cause problem. All potential reinforcement depend on the passage of times. He's a pitiful old man that can't follow it. Your Majesty, Gadra Roshi seems to fear Veldorum very much, but I'm different. Please give an order for the wicked dragon subjugation to this Calgurio by all means. Do you want to mute yourself, friendo? Seem to be slapping into your microphone. Calgurio, who stands up and bows from the other side of the blinds, said that request to the Emperor. Gadra turned a sharp gaze to Calgurio, but he let out a sigh like he had given up and receded deeply. <laughs> Yuki watched that exchanges with relish. What kind of relish? Was it pickle relish? I guess it was. God, it's because the fool, Calgurio, seemed to move as he thought. Anyway, the biggest wall for the rise of coup d'etat is armoured corps. <laughs> he thought that he wanted this corps to weaken quickly. Calgurio was a man who should be called as officer than a soldier. He's strong in battle, but he's concerned about plan and certain victory. A riskless man. But he had the aspect not to mind a loss as he was grieving, and he will move if there's a worthy reason. The important thing is that... The important thing is, as long as he given a reason, it's all good. The monster country Tempest has money, and there's surely new technology that developed there from a different viewpoint that's still unseen by the Empire. Yuki had guessed that Calgurio will move if he showed the thing indirectly. Money will attract the nobles supporting Calgurio. It will be a different story if a new technology is hidden. Calgurio will not move only by being requested by the nobles. He will turn his fang greed, not a... Fuck, ow. This is the shit that I put up with all night. Just reading it out is making me want to die. He will turn his fang greed not only to Tempest, but also the satellite city and the labyrinth itself. According to Yuki's expectation, Calgurio seemed to dance wonderfully. Calgurio, are you going to steal the march? <laughs> Your Majesty, my... Uh, who's speaking? Wrong person. Your Majesty, my beast, my magic beast, my magical beast core can also be deployed any time. Please give the wicked dragon subjugation to this me, by all means. The beast king Gladium, which kept silence before so roars. Just by standing up, there was a feeling of overwhelming coercion in the place. Definitely the personality of a ruler. 
a great general that proud of the outstanding fighting power within the empire which even ruled the magic beasts under the power. <laughs> I give up. Honestly, this is so bad. Uh, he's a person... I'm just going to start converting him back because I'm sick of reading it out like this. He's a person said to be the second strongest man in the empire. Calgurio and Gladim let their gazes intersect to restrain each other. Seeing that situation, Yuki let out a sigh in his mind. The magic beast core was certainly strong, but it's obvious that his core wasn't suitable for this campaign. So, he didn't think that Gladim would announce himself for it. Though he doesn't deny that this core is suitable for attacking, it's not cut out to challenge Veldora. At any rate, the damage given will not be little, and it's doubtful whether in the first place there are chances for their victory. Because Yuki knew that the armored core was working over Veldora countermeasures, he can finish reading the strategy, but he thinks that the magical beast core will be hardly effective against such a powerful foe. From what he heard from Chloe's story, Veldora could be expected to have high combat abilities. It's not so bad when it's the armored core, but it will be difficult for the magic beast core to win against Veldora. And, in this case, the joint struggle doesn't have any meaning either. In the first place, war is decided with numbers. Even if there are 30,000 joining in, it will be overshadowed in front of an army that has a size of hundreds of thousands. No matter how strong a unit is, if their movements are limited, then it will be difficult to deal an effective blow. Not to mention, in the case of few numbers separated, the worst case is they will get encircled by the enemy army, and each will be crushed. Above all, it's ideal for the armored corps and Veldora to face each other. Therefore, it's necessary for Veldora to come out of the front. Oh, to come out to the front. Though, about that, Yuki isn't worried too much. It's still good enough if he can crush Rimuru's executives or his subordinates. Even if Veldora doesn't appear. Comparing Rimuru's army and the Armored Corps, the Armored Corps might be superior. There seem to be several strong individuals among the executives, but as for this side, it's also similar. Calgurio is greedy, but he's not weak at all. There are protégés, special duty officers, and strong soldiers also enrolled. So, if Veldora doesn't appear, then the chance of victory wouldn't waver. It's wasteful to lose to the Magic Beast Corps here. Yuki thinks that it's necessary to do something. Please wait. I think it's better to entrust this to Calgurio, Donna. Calgurio floated a thin smile to Yuki's remark. Gladim had a bitter face. And for the first time, the Emperor permitted the remark. Say it. State your thought. Yuki stated his strategy with a humble look, whilst hiding his thoughts in his mind. First, the armored corps would invade from the front of the Great Jura Forest area. Sensing the invasion of the large corps, it's certain that vigilance would be concentrated in that area of the forest. Then, from the north side, another... <sighs> Sorry. Then, from the north side, another invasion order will come. To stun the west side as simultaneously sorry, as it simultaneously invades. Do you say north side? Do you mean to pass through the Kanak Great Mountain Range? To Gladim's question, Yuki denied it with a smile, and without any taunting, said, We can evade the battle against dragons if we go through the sea route. So he declared. Surely, judging from the flying range of the dragon, the sea route was out from the dragon's sphere of influence. However, large sea monsters inhabit that sea, and it's difficult to get rid of damage even if they went by a fleet. It's difficult to keep the superiority with the exhausted force even if it arrived at the north side's port after it passed through the disadvantageous naval battles. In addition, the Empire owned several numbers of sea battleships. It existed to be used for subjugation against those sea monsters or large sea magic beasts. It's a reason needed to link the transportation fleet to the transport of the core. But it will be not in time if prepared now. The nobles and also the ministers raised a question to Yuki's remark, but... It's possible, right? Calgurio Dodo? Yuki, bringing up the subject to Calgurio, had a smile on his face. Calgurio realized Yuki's intention at that point. Did he, brat? Did he... Is he aware of the existence of the treasures? Of the airship? Even though I concealed it so much and built it in secrecy. But Calgurio thought about it. 
on, on it wasn't a bad strategy. Calgurio also considered the strategy to attack from the north side, but he stopped. A being of glory violently makes their presence known. Celebrate or be damned! Celebrate or be thank damned! Thank you! Yes, thank you. I'll check that in a moment, sorry. But he stopped thinking this time, because there would be a problem in the number of soldiers and the formations if he greatly distributed his corps. He concentrated on Veldora and the Lampreys. That was the decision that Calgorio put out, though... It's interesting. The airship transports the Magic Beast Corps, and afterwards it's devoting itself on support and supply. As for snatching only the profit, this might be impossible. Ha! Huh. In any case, if I arranged a large force to launch a surprise attack from the north side of the West Alliance, uh, it can be a reason to forestall the people to not turn their eyes to the other side. The military gains are big. Of course, it will become a feat for aerial fighter legion. Calgorio quickly calculated in his head. The scales inclined towards profit and led to his decision. Well, well, I can't be careless to you, Kidoro. I wonder where you obtained such information from. It's really astounding. No, oh, no, it's because I have connections. <laughs> there are many acquaintances from the same town, you see. <laughs> I see. I consent to this plan. It's also been exposed earlier, but sure. There's a new weapon called an airship, which we've developed in my core. The Aerial Fighter Legion is making use of this new weapon. This is the centerpiece, our trump card. It's possible for the Aerial Fighter Legion to transport the Magic Beast Core. By Calgurio's remark, the inside of the conference hall grew excited instantly. It's because there was a way to invade the western countries without going through the Great Jura Forest. It was natural that everyone was excited. However... Approximately the maximum number of soldiers that can be transported is 100,000 people. It might be difficult to conquer the West with only this. Thus, I insist on a simultaneous attack strategy. Calgorio announced the strategy that he made in his mind while was revising his own strategy. 100 airships of Aerial Fighter Legion will deal with Veldora. The remaining 300 ships will support the Magic Beast Corps. The strategy will succeed perfectly if he sends the best of the magicians to fight Veldora. While considering it, Gladim groans. It will be an honor for soldiers to fight against the strongest dragon named Veldora. However, this strategy came with a reason. Above all, there seems to exist a group that specialized in individual combat that is said to be the strongest group, called the Holy Knight Order in the West. It seemed their number were only 200 people, but he thought that he wanted to have a fight with them at least once. Besides, there were, there existed in that country faith as a cornerstone in the west called the Holy Empire of Ruberio. There seemed to be a guard army under the Pope's direct control that rivaled that holy knight in that country. He will crush that guard army that's trampled its... He will crush that guard army and trample their holy capital. Gladim felt that the beast's blood that flows in his body began to boil, a raging inferno. It might be good! Let's go with that strategy! The excitement in the large conference hall has risen further with the words of agreement roared by the Beast King Gladim. We'll win! We'll win! Without a doubt! <laughs> Victory for us! People of the Empire! Long live your majesty the Emperor! <laughs> I became one of those fish people from the prequels. <laughs> So in such a situation, they were already entranced with the imagination of their victory. The strategy was working out smoothly, and the plan was settled without a hitch. They finally got the permission from the Emperor, and the strategy was approved. A simultaneous, double-sided invasion strategy was decided, with a sortie of the Empire. Yuki sneered in his mind. Everything was going according to his keikaku, and he became desperate to endure his laughter. With this, he can push away the nuisance of the Magic Beast Corps to the distant place, and the weakening of the Armour Corps will be certainly done, too. Even if Veldora doesn't come out particularly, the strategy is a success, even if it's just decreasing Rimuru's hand pieces. It can be said that the best result is that both sides are exhausted, and he can consume the weakened Empire from the inside and surge into a great war with all forces it has. While the chaos arises in the world, let's aim at an opportunity to kill Rimuru in that gap. Guy, Crimson, and Rimuru. Two people who Yuki should be careful with. He cannot be too careful with the other demon lords either. But he will manage it somehow if he has time. 
letting Chloe, who is the strongest hero, dispose of one, and in that gap he would get rid of the rest together with Chloe in one-against-one fights. If he did so, the limitation of his own ultimate ability would disappear, and it's possible to put Milim under his control. But there was a reason why Yuki didn't carry that out. The reason why Guy Crimson didn't move for a long time is unknown. The reason why that arrogant demon lord didn't move, that was causing uneasiness. Whether it was because something which he should be cautious of, he should be careful. Therefore, Yuki hesitated about using his trump card named Chloe. Anyway, if this war becomes big enough, the world will fall into disorder. <laughs> something will happen. Then I may see that thing that's hidden, if it happens. Right? Right. <laughs> Yuki laughed happily, and thinking about the event in the future, he grinned. <laughs> I, I, I do a lot of work converting that stuff on the fly. I just want to point that out. It's intense. Ah! And that, dear friends, is the end of tonight's reading session. <sighs> Would everybody like to come down to the stage and swap into your avatars? Oh, Lord, his face was stuck. <laughs> you can actually Perfect for a picture. Perfect for a picture. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Perfect for a picture. Indeed, indeed. Now I need to rework out how to use this bloody camera thing. It's always a baby <laughs> boop. Oh, they've made it a little easier to use these. Or is it just because my model has hands in the right position, finally? All right, so we go... Cycle movement space! Cycle movement space! Is that it? Ah! World spaced! Woo! Yeah. Homebrewed, hurry! Let me roll back. <laughs> oh, you can sit down in the chair, Anders, if you want. It doesn't bother me. Sit in the chair. It's easy for folks There we go. <laughs> that face, though. Hold on. I need to. Do I? I think I need to roll back. Uh, just got your head coming out of my chest. Maybe you can't sit in the chair. Sorry. It doesn't look like it's working properly. Ah, well. Maybe next time. All right. <laughs> Best face ever. Everybody, pose. Okay, and now silly pose. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming once more. <laughs> no, no wonderful reading. We shall not unleash the thing yet. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, need we more obviously need more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think your face. I think your face is stuck again. But it's it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, everyone enjoys this face, don't they? So well, it's um, that was an unexpected turn of events. <laughs> like, so, so fluffy. Somehow it gets me nerfy vibe. <laughs> well, I mean, I am Nerfy's brother, so it makes sense. Oh, true. Hmm. I guess the smile runs in the family. Uh, so does the loo. <laughs> yeah, we had a few. Rainbow? Oh, Twist of events and the one getting chased. Take it on different weapon. No. Oh! Yay! <laughs> oh, hold on, that's right. I need to do mm. that with that and put that there. That's okay. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Ah! Mm. I'm Bruce. Yep. Brrrr! <laughs> Mm. Oh, hold on. 
Let's. I forgot to check that, didn't I? Stream rounds. Nanny! Nanny? Nanny Shinra, you crazy, you crazy man. Loving the reading and all the other story times, you bring the stories to life. Jinrai with the massive donation of two hundred dollars. My lord! It's too much money. Okay. There's Jinrai up there. <laughs> Don't run from me. Oh, you're a zero two more. He's running. Thank you so much. I believe I owe you this. I do truly, truly okay. love the sport. You donate too much, though, sir. <laughs> oh, man. That's a very nice model. Uh... <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> Other way. Everyone's here because they know what's about to happen. I hope that I can continue to bring no. stories to life for you. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now I run! Ah, oh, God, there's a wall! No. <laughs> right into the bloody wall! <laughs> no! <laughs> I why am I moving so slow? <laughs> it's like Microsoft, the old bloody walls. That screensaver. You can't get me! <laughs> Power fist! Oh god damn it. Why is there no wall? I must flee! No walls will ever stop me! <laughs> no. Okay, no, I gotta ask, why did you do this? Why? <laughs> this is the best slides ever. Do you like jazz? So this is what hell looks like. Magnetic. <laughs> I had the walls ready oh, to man. cover all the B-movie, and then you did this. <laughs> and so they can't do it anymore. Yes, I have succeeded! <laughs> no. I haven't. It's a great movie, isn't it? No. I think there's something like 730 copies of it in here. I can see you owning that. This was merely a setback. <laughs> Challenge is <laughs> on! <laughs> uh, although I will say, I hope, I hope the running music helps with the uh, whole running situation. <laughs> Benny Hill <Hussein. Yeah! laughs> probably <laughs> mutes the VOD, but who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think at that point everyone's just going psycho. To be honest, I actually like the style. At this point? What was oh, that, sorry? Nice. <laughs> Actually, isn't Benny Hill? Isn't Benny Hill one of the previous songs now? It might be public to me. Learn how to do. You have no idea how yeah, much. I'll, I'll make, I got silver to make it. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He so told me about it. I'm get up in like less yeah. than seven hours and go get wasted. I want to learn how to do it. Oh, yeah, no, I know about the bachelor party. I'm going to be there for a little bit. Like this style. As they say, always have Have you always been that small? And this. And the hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are right, homebrew. Yeah, you you always make think? another amazing reading, so I must be to sleep. No worries, good friend. No worries. I like it too. Catch next one tomorrow. <laughs> would be great. That would be good. Boop. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tempted to make more, just so that I can creep people out with even crazier ones. Hey? No, I think 
I think I'm more scared that we won't be looking like I won't be paying attention to anything. If everyone, everyone stares at me, all I'm gonna turn around to is just this mess this guy smiling at me. <laughs> and this is gonna be that face. <laughs> well I was thinking of making a chibi version of this model, and all I was going to do was shrink down the body oh. so it's really small and increase the head like TK mode from the old golden eye game. Oh. <laughs> and I can just walk around with really over the top expressions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does everybody know that going to the shop animation? The guy that looks like he's made of chili. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Essentially like that. Change the walk animation to just be that thing. <laughs> when he, he's on the stairs, I always. Yeah. Yeah. That's that moment. Uh, actually, like the. Uh, at this point, like. Uh, there's one song that does come to mind that I got, and I'm not sure if I should play it, but there's one song that comes to mind when you do that. That is so calm. <laughs> I saw your model and immediately thought you were Kaiser Lot. You two are too similar. <laughs> Tiny kid. Anyways, hey, hey, hey. you guys later. Have nope. a good one. Good night. Bricks. See you later, Bill Bricks. See you later, Bricks. Bye bye. Bricks. Nope. Mine. so tiny. <laughs> Normally, oh man, my neck is so weak. I can spend hours looking up. Rainbow. Looking down hurts like hell. <laughs> I suppose that's what I get for six months in a lolly avatar. Hmm? Oh no. <laughs> Not like this. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> your faces are so damn cute still, like a range. Is that your original model? No, that's my second avatar. Ah. I just remember that was the one that I met you in. Anyone with a big head. Oh yes, that's the one I spent the most time in when I first got into VR too. Then you got a large version of it. <laughs> yep. A grown up one. Meanwhile, I change my avatar every second week. Like an old pair of socks. Throw the old one out, buy a new one. <laughs> yeah. well, I've been using it yeah. switching between a lot Teach of Teach me the ways of red and black. <laughs> And this is all now. Uh, Why are you standing back there? Oh, Come into the lock, I can't tell from, I can't <laughs> tell tell from this. I, I can't tell from this. Oh, yeah, everyone. <laughs> Get them. Mm. Uh, only like three people <laughs> with hands here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everyone else is dusty. That's also. Well. You can do that too. Oh, gosh. Teach me. Yeah. You know, I've not watched that series yeah. that character is from. All I know is its name is Zero Two. Yeah. And Gusto. I'm being hunted yeah. by something. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, on this one. <laughs> Cables. Yeah. I, I the hat or the needle. I do not. Oh my. Go from ten. I can't can even pull up a needle with this. Yes, I am. Okay, I don't know that game either. I don't know anything here. I'm so out of touch. I know that's from one of the Monogatari series, but I don't know which. I know that's from Maiden Abyss. I think that's what it's called. 
That's from God knows. That's from yeah. Unity Chan. That's. <laughs> oh Lord, what's happened to your chest? Thirty nine. That's from Miku. That's. It looks like that's from Full Metal Alchemist, the original. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or is it from Bruderhood? Uh, it's both. Bruderhood. It's both. I see. That's from. Hmm, that looks like Riku, but I'm thinking it's Ruby. I don't know. Never seen it. The body's Ruby. That no, that no. is from my world. I know that. You are a very cute hoppo with uh, steampunk style on. Though I still don't know anything about Kanko beyond the fact that the Abyssal girls are all dead. And they're the best looking ones out of all of them. So I guess that means that I like dead girls. <laughs> I think that's what that means. Murder. Murder. And you are from that series Something in the Franks. <laughs> such such an out of touch man. I'm not sure what you're from. Something adorable, I'm sure. All you cute and I've never never known what you're from, Dr. Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> and all the time I've ever known you, I've never known what you're from. At first I thought it was from like God of Gamers one, because of the little skull symbol. It kind of reminded me of the demon that comes down. I don't know. Uh, hmm. No, my little demon is from Galgun. Galgun. Yeah, it's a pretty old <laughs> game. Hey. And you're from that Chinese modeler. I don't know any of the stuff that he does. I just know that all of his bases are the same. <laughs> it's the same base that I used for this avatar. Well, not base, but head. Hmm. The base for this one was something completely different. When it loads, ha! has the best faces. They're so expressionful. <laughs> So soft and delightful, and the hair he does is really good. Small. Small. See, I'm used to this height. I'm used to looking up at everyone. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I have no issues. Ah. He It's been a while since I've been in this other time. Hello? When you're taller, it's harder giving head pets. <laughs> I mean, when you're smaller, it's harder giving head pets too. If you're tall, you can always <laughs> give head pets though. Unless you invent some form of propulsion to lift yourself off the ground and ascend to a new realm of possibilities. <laughs> a glorious change is required. Oh. Hello. Rainbow. It's been quite a while since I've been in this one. Best blue tail. I think that's from <laughs> Fist of the North Star. Either that or Jojo. It's Well, thank you all again for coming to this reading. I might go work on some world stuff, or model stuff, or sleep, or all three at once. Sleep and work on world and model stuff. Hmm, that sounds like the best idea. <laughs> so, I will end this stream and jump off now. Mm -hmm. Farewell, lovely people. I hope to see you at the next reading, yeah! which will be in... I'm bad at math. <laughs> so, Thir <laughs> Thirteen hours? Question mark? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. I, I think so. I, maybe I'll see you before then. I might do a morning stream so I can say hello to Little Bagel and everyone else that's online.
Oh, nice. Body suits are the best suits. Yep. 13 hours. 13 Actually. hours. Let's do it. 13 hours time. I'll see whoever can make it there. As I continue the story of Only Sense Online. <laughs> Have a good one. I turned it down somewhere. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, wow. um, Bye. I'll feed the same at you. I pressed the escape button. Why didn't it not work? Ha ha! Oh, lovely people in the chat. There is one th ow, that was my jaw. My jaw just cracked. God damn it. Ugh, uh, uh. All right then. So there's one thing that we must do, which I always seem to never do at the end of these readings, which seems like a terrible waste of power. Let's find if there's anyone we can raid, shall we? Oof, that was bright in my eyeballs. Last thing I needed. Oh, come on. Why is this so hard to do? Eh, er, follow me. Let us see who is online. Bum, bum. Guess what? Nobody's online! <laughs> None of the channels that I follow are online. Oof. Hmm. Everyone is dead. No, there's a bunch. Let's just... Let's go and take a look at the VR chat. Ugh! Sub-entry. See who's streaming in there. Ugh! Let's take a look. And I can guide and push you all into the direction that I feel that I will... Blah, 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 words. Oh, let's see. Oh, man. Every time I look at this page, I get a little worried. Because there are so many people streaming now. That there are so many options for viewers, which means that everyone that starts out now is going to see barely any growth. It kind of makes me a little sad. I'm super grateful that there are people that watch me when I come on. Like, even if it's only 10 or 15, it's amazing. Considering the amount of people I see here with one viewer on their channel. My lord. makes me feel a bit sad. I don't know any of these names, though, so I don't... If I saw someone that I knew, I... Shonzo. Ready? The Jessen? <laughs> He's doing Minecraft. <laughs> sure. I mean, if you all want to go and watch Minecraft, let's let's raid him. <laughs> Welcome to Thank the you so much hall. again, Jinrai. I really don't feel worth it, but. Everyone keeps saying that I've got to stop saying that, that I am worth everything, that I deserve is what I get. So, well, thank you so much. I just hope that I can keep up to your standard and bring you joy and happiness for many, many years to come. I love you. Oh, oh, hold on. We'll go to my daughter then. Trap Man is a good one. It's not going to be a typical raid, but, I mean, it'll still work. Uh, VR Trap Man... 
I mean, we can raid it. It just it's going to be a very small raid because it only takes the active people. I'll paste this. <laughs> yeah. I'm the best streamer. Best streamer ever. <laughs> All right. This is the one I was going to do. We raid and... And we'll say that the message is purple butts, even though, you know, not purple butt. All right. Yes, he's playing Roblox, my lord. Well, it was lovely having you all. Farewell, and have a lovely night, you beautiful people. You deserve every moment of it. Farewell. And I'll see you over there when I pop a few purple butts messages in the chat. <laughs> Goodbye. Yes, I know. It's a little annoying, but eh, everyone streams on different platforms nowadays.